welcome everyone. Welcome, welcome to Leicester, to Blading in Leicester. We've, We've got, got a week two clash for you today. Uh, welcome, welcome to the uh, live stream from uh, Onside Productions, Productions and uh, UK AFL Football. And uh, I'm, I'm here, here with, um, not the usual Matt Walker, it's Carl Walker, you're here, but I'm here with, with Matt Neville. Neville. Hi Matt. Thank, Thank you, Carl. Uh, good to see you. Good to see you. Thanks, Thanks very much for joining us. And, and if you're, you're joining us because you, you, you're, you're normal, normally, you should be out there on the field, field with Leicester, Leicester. you've injured your finger. finger, tell us about that. Uh, so it was a training session just before our first game against Sheffield, unfortunately. I snapped my finger, unfortunately, a bit grim, but they've decided to put me somewhere a little more useful. All right, right, excellent. So, so we've got, got Nev uh, for the uh, live stream cast today, so we we'll look forward to catching, catching up with him, obviously, an expert on Leicester Falcons, so we can find out a bit more about how that team ticks. But today, today Leicester Falcons with a tough challenge against the Merseyside Nighthawks, who travel down, down to Liverpool. This is the first time we've seen the Merseyside Nighthawks this season, so we're going to talk a bit about them as well. We've got coaching interviews with them coming up as well, but let's talk firstly about this Leicester Falcons team. So they had a good first outing two weeks ago against the Sheffield Giants. Scored 21, 21 points against Sheffield, Sheffield which is a tough defence. defence. And how, how did, did you feel that went there from a Leicester Falcons perspective? perspective? I, feel I feel it was, it was a well-earned victory for, she- uh, for uh, Leicester. It was a tough game. game. It's our, our first, first game in the Prem as well, our first opening game, game of the season. season. I feel, I feel like, like it was well earned, but Sheffield definitely put up a big fight, which was you know, decent, decent of them, which is what we really want to see. Really want to see. So, so it was a good start for Leicester in the Premiership, their first outing here, as we know, after winning the Div 1 final last year against the uh, Kent Exiles. But today is a different challenge for them. Um, Merseyside and Nighthawks are able to put up points, aren't they, quickly. So what, what do you need to do as a Leicester defence to stop this team? Take them seriously. Always take them seriously. Every team is a fresh team. And, and every, every every game is a new game. game. Take every, every team seriously. And this is a very well-established squad with many years behind them. them. Very, they, they know exactly what they're doing in the Premiership. So take them very much seriously. Let's see if we can get some BT actually of the uh, Giants game. Let's see if we can get the Giants game, the Leicester game running for you. So you can see what happened a couple of weeks ago. Uh, but, but in the meantime, meantime we, we also hear from, from Leicester that their quarterback situation, because of the visa situation, you'll remember from last time, two weeks ago, uh, scholarship players over from Baker University not able to play against Leicester due to a late decision by BAFA not to allow those players without the right visas on the registration system to play. That means that what was starting for as QB last time out, uh, this time out we think they've made some adjustments and uh, we're not quite sure what's going to happen with the quarterback position, but we expect it will be somebody different. Well, Ted has, did us an absolute solid last, uh, last week, the other, other game against Sheffield. Absolutely fantastic. And I do believe he's going to be starting again, as far as I know. But as for the whole situation with the visas and the American quarterbacks, uh, the American players, we just play it as it is and see what happens with it. But at the moment, our players are doing a fantastic job, holding their own in the Prem and doing this club proud. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we can't, I mean I'm, I'm, I'm hearing, hearing from Noel Kassar actually in the interview that Brad Thompson, Thompson might also be playing to fill in that quarterback position. Is that something you're aware of, Nick? Yeah, I'm aware of Brad. I met him a couple of weeks ago. A very a good player, a decent man. And I really hope look forward to seeing him play today as well. And defensively, we know that the star of the Leicester Falcons is Taylor Brown, but there are other players on that defensive line that had a really good game against Sheffield. Um, but Taylor Brown's a real star. And interestingly, they've been playing him at linebacker, haven't they, a lot this season, rather than in defence. Yes, 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 indeed. indeed. Can you talk, talk to the decision. decision. Why has that, that made, decision been made? Well, well when, when you've, you've got, got someone like Taylor, Taylor Brown, Brown, who is basically a multi-tool on the defence, you, you put, put him somewhere and he will be productive and he will give you results. results. He's, He's that, that kind, kind of player who you can just thoroughly rely on in any position on the defence. And we, and we know, know that this team's got, got some um, got some weapons, Merseyside, got some weapons in terms of their wide receiver squad. Do you think the decision to play Taylor Brown will come to harm a little bit? Or will they want to go for putting him back at defence, back in critical situations? We, we can only really tell, we'll see as the game unfolds. unfolds. We can only see when the game unfolds to see exactly what's going to happen. What, if this is going to be good or bad. I would, I would trust this, this uh, defense, defense and the DC of uh, the Falcons to know what, what they're doing and understand that. Utilizing Taylor Brown in any way they can. We'll know, as I said before, we'll get results. And in terms of the offensive line, now obviously you were the starting center then. So what's happened on the offensive line? What changes have been made to, as we go into this game? So we've still got some good, we've still got some of our starters there. and. They're going to do us proud today. They really, really are. It's a shame I'm not out there today. It's heartbreaking. But I get to be here, so I'm happy. But it's going to be a good game. We're going to get some of our backups on there who, again, are going to be reliable. They're going to go there. They're going to win this game for us. They really are. I know I should be here. Unbiased. Unbiased. I do apologize for Merseyside. They're a good squad. Uh, I, I think, think that they're, they're, they're going to take us all away, and honestly, they're, they're going to they're they're do us proud. Obviously, obviously we've, we've talked a lot about Marcus Francis, Francis early in the backfield, but really key for him is that offensive line and the way they play. Yeah. Yeah. He, uh, it's, 
honestly, honestly about, about making up those gaps. gaps. Ma getting, getting that, that uh, D line moving, getting, getting those gaps open for Marcus. But of course, once Marcus, Marcus gets going, going he, you know, he, he just keeps he's a juggernaut. He'll, he'll just, just go through anybody. anybody. And it's a tough, he's a tough man to bring down. So look forward to seeing him again today. But we know also as well, a running back position, we've got Patterson as well that can come and play running back. And a new running back I know, Lewis Hyde from the NT uh, Renegades who uh, played some running back for us last season. We're excited, excited to see him as well maybe make his debut, debut for Leicester Falcons today. today. Yes, yes definitely. definitely. And of course, can't, can't be all about power. You've got to have speed in there as well. You've got to have agility, agility which I think we'll have, have definitely have with AP. And obviously this new, new high chap. chap. I, I think, think it's, it's going to be spread off. off. Hi Noel, uh, I'm back, back here with Noel Kassar, head coach of Leicester Falcons. Falcons. Good, good to see you, Noel. Good, good, good win last week, week. Uh, well, well, two, two weeks, weeks ago, 21, uh, 21 points scored against Sheffield Giants. So how's training, training gone on since then? Uh, it's, it's, it's gone well. Um, now we know what, what, what QB we can play and we can't play, so we've, 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 we've straightened that position the past few weeks. Um, no, it's, it's gone, gone well. well. Players are turning up. Got a few of them on the O line. One standing beside you, as you can imagine. Is what it is. is. At the end of the day, I've, I've, I've given, given up a bit now, so it is what it is. At the end of the day. So, so tell, tell us what's happening with your QB situation uh, today. The, the, the visas are still, still a problem. Uh, nothing to change the past few weeks. weeks. I don't think anything will change until we can apply for the tier four. Um, so uh, we've managed to get uh, Marcus and Coventry, thanks to a bit of Tamworth and Brad out of retirement. Believe it or not. Excellent. So we look forward to that. Exciting. Is this the plan to? Rotate, rotate them in, or is it um, well, with yeah, Ted, Ted, Ted did so well last game. game. I'm, I'm, I'm not, not just going to leave him out because of the weather experience. He's two great QB, so, so Ted, Ted will start, and then we'll see what happens from there. Um, we might, might see one of the wide receivers. receivers. He might see Brad at safety. Who knows? Right, he's right. he's so a strength in that area, so it's, uh, you should always have strength in every position you can you can muscle up the line. For example, now we've got four players missing. We've got depth to come back in, and also D-line will help out where needed. All right, excellent. So the last time you played Merseyside Night Elves was about three years ago, I think, in a Div Quite One, um, a Div One matchup. So what what do you know about the Night Elves? How do you game um, plan? It's for a bit team? it's a bit hard because they've not played yet. So we 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 could, we've got no film. Or the only film we got of them last year, which I, I don't really use as such. Um, I concentrate on us really more than them. Um, they'll have to stop us as much as what we've got to stop them. I, I don't know. I don't know much about them. I tried to watch a bit of film, but there's nothing there really. You know, I c it's I'm not being straight up to Merseyside. So I, I I don't know. Uh, give t tell me in four weeks' time, five weeks' time, I'll tell you what the strengths are. Sure. Um, I know last year there were an option running kind of team, so I'm expecting the same thing today. Um, they yeah. seem to have the ability to score points quite quickly. Is there any adjustments you've made on defence to take into account that some of their speed goes? Um, no, no, not really. No, no, we're still going to play a four-three. No, no different to uh, to what we normally play. Um, I thought we scored points quicker than what they do. To be honest, with a new offence. Uh, so no, no, we're not adjusting anything. All right, well, we look forward to an exciting game. Thanks oh, very much for talking to us, Nala. We'll see All you right. at the end. Cheers. Yeah. Okay. Uh, having some sound issues there. We'll get those technical issues sorted out for you as we bring you the game. Uh, and on the back of Noel's interview, it's really interesting, isn't it, when you look at how what the Falcons have achieved over the last three years. 29 wins, no losses, one tie, and that tie actually was... Uh, because uh, I think it was Doncaster didn't have an ambulance at the game, so it ended up being a tie, a tie game uh, for the Falcons. But um, other than that, they've had a tremendous run over the last three years. And from a player perspective, Nev, tell us about uh, you know what's made the difference. It's commitment, commitment to the game, and commitment to a great coaching program and just a great franchise in, in itself. The Falcons is a fantastic franchise to play for, very well organised, with two with a wonderful head coach who's an absolute pit bull about making us be the best that we can and the same with uh, our chairman Guy Kersey just someone who will not let us be mediocre that will let us be the best and that just takes us all the way to where we need to be to being one of, one of the top clubs in England 
And you do tend to attract those players as well when you have a programme like that, a winning programme like Leicester have. And I think additionally with the partnership with Baker University, Derby University and Leicester Falcons, that's exciting. Is that from a player perspective? Do you look forward to seeing those American scholars come over? Yes, I do. Most, most definitely. It's, it's great to have that input from players who have played from effectively almost from birth. It's absolutely fantastic to have their feedback and seeing them come over and play as well. And we appreciate in any aspect of, of, of it, be it the NFL or anyone coming over to help the British game get better. We are always incredibly thankful for it. And this is just a new step on the future for American football in England. All right, excellent. Thanks for that. Let's turn our attention now to the Merseyside Nighthawks. So the Merseyside Nighthawks, they were 5-5 five and five last season. They seemed to conquer those bottom teams, but they weren't able to get be above the Titans or, of course, Tamworth. Yeah. Tamworth seemed to have the measure of them every time they met. Tamworth able to put up big scores against this Merseyside Nighthawks uh, uh, defence. We, we have yet to see Tamworth, obviously, this season. But Merseyside, a good, a solid start to, well, a good, solid season last season with 5-5 five and five and staying mid-table. As I said to you previously, they're an established team who have spent five, is it five years in the Prem, and they've established themselves as a team that can make all the correct moves and get themselves where they need to be and obviously maybe sometimes a little lacking on the finish but I'm pretty sure they can get themselves where they need to be and definitely when it comes to the big teams maybe even surprise us you never know yeah when you look at some of the scores from last time for Merseyside Nighthawks last season they won uh, against Sheffield 31-28 which was a close game they beat Edinburgh 14-10 there were some really close uh, close games but they managed to pull themselves through and as I say end up mid-table they do have a, a, a good coaching staff, a good program, as you say. They went through a weekend training camp just recently. They have, some, they have some very good players as well in terms of some GB linebackers, I hear, as well. Yes, indeed. And it's a very strong squad for what, what we're seeing here. They've travelled very well and they look very well drilled and very, very strong. I think it's going to be a, a very good turnout today and a very good uh, game from Merseyside. All right, we were able to interview the general manager for the Merseyside Nighthawks. We want to bring you that interview now, so uh, let's run that. I'm here with Pete Horgan, who's the general manager of the Merseyside Nighthawks. Hi, Pete. Hi, thanks, very much for, thanks very much for doing the interview no with us today. Um, tell us about last season, 5-5. Five and five. It was a mid-table season for Merseyside, but you did well against some tough opposition. Yeah, we, we started slow last year. Uh, we went 0-4, I think, for the first four games. So uh, the guys came out of the blocks sort of mid-season last year, so it was a bit disappointing. Uh, particularly after the last two seasons of playoff football in, in, in the Premiership as well. So uh, time to get going again this week. And this is your first game of the Premiership season for this year. Yeah. Uh, did you see Leicester play and what are you expecting from Leicester today? Yeah, we, we, we watched the, uh, the the last stream and we've seen some game film of them. There's, there's nothing surprising coming out of them. They, they play a similar defence to what we play. They've got a big backer like eating up, eating up yards. So, listen, we're, we're, we're prepped for them, we're ready to go. And in terms of the season overall, who are the big? Where do you see the big challenges coming from, or is it too early to say in the season? I think it's it's, it's probably a little bit too early to say. I mean, you see Sheffield already played twice. Uh, Leicester have already got the win on the board as well. Tamworth obviously uh, are always going to be a difficult opponent in the division they're in. And then listen, looking at the south as well, there's some some big boys down there as well. So you know, it's a little bit early, but we we're, we're not going to be surprised by anyone this year. And what are the players to watch? Give us a sense of who we should be directing the camera at today. Who are the players that are really exciting from the Merseyside side? So we've, we've got a couple of GB guys uh, down at the practice yesterday. A couple of linebackers, Will McEwen and uh, Mark Horton. Uh, Rio's been around for a while. He's played over in the States before, so he's, he's got some good calibre there. Uh, offensively, you know, we've got a small wide receiver group, but there's some decent guys out there. Alex Eager, uh, Harry Routledge, he's obviously played out in, in, in Europe as well. So a couple of guys there. Mar Martin Murphy, our running back, is obviously someone to look out for as well. So And game planning wise, just to finish up, what are going to be the keys if you get the win today? I think it's, it's, it's simple stuff. It's, you know, run the ball well, uh, pass the ball well. Don't throw into coverage, that type of thing as well. So it's, it's very simple, just ground the, ground the yards out. All right, excellent. Thanks ever so much for joining us, Pete, and uh, good luck for the game today. Thanks, Carl. Welcome back. Uh, good interview there from Pete uh, Horgan of the Merseyside Nighthawks, their general manager. Uh, we look forward to seeing what they can do on the field today with their quarterback, Harry Routledge, and their other GB players, their good receiving core. Uh, so it'll be exciting to see what they can do again. So we're expecting a tight game, I think, yeah? I think I imagine it's going to be a very tight game. It's going to be hard fought on both sides, and I think everyone's going to come out and give 110% and really make this game a spectacle, I think. 
All right, excellent. We're going to run the highlight reel from two weeks ago, Sheffield Giants against Leicester Falcons. Let's have a look at what happened last time for these Leicester Falcons. And those big physical receivers out there who literally just let's pop the ball up and see if we can get it over the back of the defender. And this one is caught, and it's to the end zone. Number 10, Danny Burton, for the opening score of the Leicester Falcons 2019 campaign. Yeah, and it's as easy as that. That's uh, the Falcons setting their stall out early on, and they just run that little... Uh, Screen pass almost to number 10, nice and safe pass on second and goal, and that will obviously take them in for the touchdown. So, really exploiting quickly the mistake uh, of the Sheffield Giants on the interception, driving down the field, four plays and in. So, and that is good. And our score is the Leicester Falcons seven and the Sheffield Giants zero. So, here we go then. New running by this time, and he's always oh, he's clawed in the end zone. Is he in the end zone? He is, and that's going to be a safety for the Giants. So, second prize for the Giants. They can't get in for the touchdown. But number 33, Ashton Patterson, was with the carry that time. Well, that's a disaster for the Falcons. So, here we go. Yeah, uh, what's rather back to pass. Pops the ball up to his left-hand side. He's got Jarrett. And Jarrett hauls it in, we think. And that is a Leicester touchdown. Signaled on the back line by the official. Tom Jarrett, number 17, with a fantastically athletic grab. Wasn't bad coverage, to be fair, by that giant defender. Um, but the physicality and the uh, presence of mind by Jarrett as uh, Danny Burton converts the extra point. Yeah, fantastic athletic ability and does really well to hold on to that ball as he slams into the ground. But those extra points make the score the Leicester Falcons 14 and the Sheffield Giants 2. It's interesting that the Falcons are trying to get all players involved. And, and in many ways, as Watts looks back over to his right-hand side and it's caught again by David as he stays on his feet. And he is in for the third touchdown of the afternoon for the Leicester Falcons. That is... Davidas Merkulis on his debut. Yeah, he did really well there. And it, it, again, Watts did really nice on the timing of the pass. Gives enough time for Davidas to run the pattern. And it enables Davidas to get in position. And then he's such a big, strong receiver. He's at least 6'3", uh, perhaps a little taller. And he's a, a big guy to bring down. And you're certainly not going to bring him down just with one arm. The ball is down and through the uprights for the extra point which is good which takes the score to 21 to 2 in favor of the falcons so first down and johnson looks to the air he's got allen and allen receives it on the two yard line trundles in for the first touchdown of the giants 2019 campaign and it is josh allen is this what you've expected man from the first game of the season so it's, I, I think i think it probably has been the way we expected it to go as we run out with a final score of the Leicester Falcons 21 and the Sheffield Giants 8 here at Leicester Lions Rugby Football Club. Welcome back uh, to Leicester. We're just getting ready now for the Leicester Falcons to come out onto the field. So you'll probably see them uh, in the background here. But those highlights just highlighted how uh, it took a bit of time, didn't it, for Leicester Falcons to get going. But once they did get going, uh, we know that they scored those 21 points in the end. Yes, they did, definitely. And it's maybe a little bit slow to start but they'll they'll get in that, that second gear hopefully a lot earlier this time get those points on the board and definitely avoid stalling as much as possible all right you can see the leicester falcons coming out onto the field now let's take you to an earlier interview that we did some weeks back with sky sports neil reynolds our very own matt walker from one side productions was able to catch up with neil reynolds and we want to bring you that interview right now i'm joined by neil reynolds nfl presenter for sky sports afternoon neil Hi, how are you? Very well, thank you. What, what brings you to Leicester this afternoon? So I am definitely here as a dad today. So my son plays for the uh, Kent Exiles junior team. Um, he's in the Great Britain under 19s uh, junior Lions. He's a quarterback. Um, so obviously with Deshaun Watson coming here, we had the opportunity uh, to come up. So as I spend most of my Sundays driving around, sitting in car parks, standing on the side of fields, I'm very much here as a dad uh, supporting my son, George. You mentioned the fact that Deshaun Watson from the Houston Texans is up in Leicester with the sun's out for him. Uh, do you think that would have an impact at all on the fact that he's taking the time to come into you know, Central England, Leicester, and, uh, and, and give his time to the British game? Yeah, I think it does a, a couple of things. But obviously, it gives a huge boost to uh, the players that are out there learning from, uh, from Deshaun and from Quincy Avery, who was Deshaun's quarterback's coach. So they're, they're going to learn stuff there. Um, I think they are... 
um, you know, it, it also helps send the message to Deshaun that, that there is an active British-American football community. You mentioned about your son being involved with the Exiles and the GB set up, so you'll have a, a quite a good knowledge of the British game. Where do you see the British game at the moment currently? Yeah, I think it's uh, definitely coming back that way. I think it's benefiting from the, the London NFL games being on. I think when you look at um, you look at what the, uh, the the teams are doing, the players that are coming through, I think they're going to have a genuine shot to go to to America, mm. some of these young kids that are coming up. They, they, they take it so serious. I mean, I played back in the 90s and we didn't take it <laughs> serious, to be fair, as it, as it is now. So, um, you know, I think there's some good athletes across the league. I, I'm very interested to see this sort of Premier League campaign coming up. Um, and I, I do think, you know, you know I think what F.A. Abada has done, what Tiki Sanko has done, yeah. uh, it just gives them hope. It, it gives does. these kids hope. Um, so I, you know, I see a better standard of athlete across the board. So a really important and a, and a very quickly growing part of the UK game is the British University set up with books. What benefits does the university game have for Britball in this country? I think uh, I, I'm really impressed with the college football stuff here, the Bucks, uh, for a number of years. Uh, when you look at the way the teams are turned out for a start, they look very professional I think the standard is is very good I think they always put on a good sort of finals day yeah. but yeah I think you know university football is is so such a success story in this country when you think about how fast it's grown one of the fastest growing university su sports um, you know I think any any kind of credit or plaudits they get their way is fully deserved and and you know I, I think they'll probably put on another good show in the in the finals that's what uh, happens every year so I, I think it's in really really good shape well it's nice that we've got two new finalists in the premiership this year compared to last and that finals day is next sunday in loughborough just down the road from here uh, so we expect a good game from that another area of uh, the the growing game is the women's the game with the sapphire series and the likes of phoebe Schechter, who's now uh, applying her wares with the buffalo bills or, or did do yes yeah, so i think phoebe's a great ambassador for that i think the the great britain women's team a few years back the success they had really kind of kick-started even more you know it was there and the, the ladies were playing but I think more and more have come in now um, you know Kent Exiles I've seen it firsthand have, have had a team last year they had about seven or eight players and they kind of played as a development team this year they had 15 20 players and and they were growing so and I think the NFL have echoed the importance of the women's game with that latest 100-year uh, commercial with Sam Gordon in there and and obviously the uh, the, the, the female official the name eludes me at the moment um, but so all in all I think this the game in general is uh, is, in a, is in a really good state your season upcoming we can't wait for the NFL season to come back as we never can <laughs> any major plans for Sky Sports this year is it going to be pretty much as things are I think it's uh, you know our our um, our, uh, our studio will will look the same. We'll bring in new faces. We're always looking to add new players, and we get a lot of interest from ex players, recently retired players coming over. Um, so yeah, we just keep uh, keep trying to raise the bar, keep trying to push things forward, and you know I'll, I'll enjoy it when it gets here. But I do also enjoy it a little bit the rest of the offseason, just a little one. Welcome back to Blaby after that interview for Neil Reynolds. We are ready for the kickoff, and there it goes. Leicester receiving in the first half of this one. Merseyside in black, Leicester in green. And that's a good kickoff return. And that's a nice start for Thomas Singleton Wells, uh, sponsored by Focus Charity this year. Tom Singleton Wells has played wide receiver, he's played DB, and now we're seeing him do some kick return. Never a nice start for Leicester. That's a, good, that's a very good start. Noel Kassar will be very happy with that being our special teams mastermind today. That was some definite, very wonderful block in there on that one for TSW to get down there and get a good start for our offense. So that's going to bring them out to around the 40-yard line, their own 40-yard line. We're just getting them on. Actually, it's been brought back, hasn't it, for some reason. So first and 10, uh, looks like it's going to start at the 22. So we'll give you an update on that as soon as we hear what's happened. And of course now we're oh, seeing the offense. <laughs> they're actually marching them even further back. So they're going to start from the 12-yard line there. So that's just wiped off Tom Singleton's wells, about 30 yards of his run back. Well, that completely uh, takes away everything I just said. So uh, I'll take that back. Maybe we'll try better next time. <laughs> All right, here we go. First and 10. It is Watts in the backfield, handing off to Marcus uh, Francis. And Marcus Francis stuffed there, only about a yard on uh, to open his account today against Merseyside. So I want to just 
Let's have a look at the number 55 there, that linebacker. He's a big, big chap. And by the looks of things, the Merseyside, as soon as they see Marcus on the field, are very much ready for this. Yeah, they do have some great linebackers, does this Merseyside team, some GB linebackers. That was Mark Houghton on the tackle this time. Watts back to pass, goes to his right-hand side, has a man. Oh, and that's a great interception early on. And that is Johnny Weeks for Merseyside Nighthawks, who just picked that one out of the air, playing that cover one coverage. And he was over there and uh, made a great play on the ball. Fair, fair play to him. That was an absolutely fantastic catch there on the interception. And he was right where he needed to be on that one and just stood there, waited for it, caught it. And then that's Merseyside now on, ready for offense. So first blood to Merseyside Nighthawks as they uh, get that picks from Watts. Now, it was interesting in the last game with Watts, being this uh, second-year quarterback from, uh, you know, playing university ball, they didn't really give him the chance to throw downfield. But interesting, they go downfield early. Anyway, it's a turnover with Merseyside now starting at Leicester Falcons' 40-yard line. It's uh, Routledge, I believe, who hands off to the shifty little running back, tries to get her out, does Laurent, and he does turn the corner, and he picks up about four yards to hope in his account, and Ashimanga, who is a uh, very shifty, very difficult running back to bring down. I look forward to seeing this man play today. He was obviously so quick on there on the outside and it was a good shift there for the, the Falcons defense to bring over and try and bring him down but there was some good yardage gain there well it's actually going to come back isn't it so a couple of penalties early on in this one which means that the Merseyside Nighthawks are going to be marched back and it's going to be first and 20 wipes off Shimanga's run and that's one thing you really need to understand that you cannot be making these mistakes even early on Quell that now. Let that be the last mistake for anyone on that field right now. So Harry Routledge, number 17, plays in Europe uh, for Merseyside. He's their starting quarterback today. They've got uh, an extra running back in the backfield. This one is stuffed. And that is, let's get a number for you, that is number 43 for the Leicester Falcons. It was Arthur Maney coming in, it looks like, from uh, his uh, linebacker position to make the tackle there. And a man who's just come off playing from Coventry and winning a uh, national final uh, for the university. So he's a man who's definitely on a high right now. Yeah, Coventry, uh, sorry, uh, Le Leicester Falcons doing a lot, aren't they, to recruit from these university teams, NTU and Coventry and others, and they're really beginning to shine, these players. So Harry Routledge now as Leicester threatened Blitch, and that looks like it's going to be a free play. So Routledge does go deep, looking for the receiver, and that's in and out of the hands of Alex Eager. A little bit down the right hand sideline a little bit eager there on the linebacker there and uh, Nighthawks just stood their ground didn't move at all and there's a fair play to the Nighthawks there for holding their water so early flags obviously this is the first time we've seen Merseyside they did have that camp didn't they but um, you know obviously not as drilled Obviously, their first game out, so you would expect some mistakes. But Leicester Falcons had that game against Sheffield. Still quite a high number of penalties in that game. And again, they're starting out with a few penalties today. Anyway, brings up second and about 10. Routledge in the shotgun. This time he hands off to number 44, who barrels his way up the middle and made some decent yardage. Maybe four yards for the running back there, who is Martin Murphy. And a big, a big chap there. He's obviously going to be your kind of man who's going to be up the middle, up the gut, trying to get those, claw those yards down and try and wear down the defensive line. Martin Murphy, one of the... Foul. Face masks, 47 on the defence, 15 yards up to the end of the run, first down. So that's Pete Sandham of the Leicester Falcons with the face mask there, and that's going to march him 15 yards on the first down. Martin Murphy, uh, the running back there on that play, was actually one of Merseyside's MVPs last season. So he opens his account with a decent run and then a penalty on top. So it's a lot of penalties on Leicester at the moment. And again, as, uh, as I reiterate, it's very important that you don't get these penalties. Very important. So two backs in the backfield for Merseyside. Routledge calls for the ball. This one's low, picks it up, looks over the middle and looking for the post pattern. And that's just hits the post. That's a post. That should get some points for the Kirby there. <laughs> and out of bounds. Looking for that man. That's the second time they've tried to go to Alex Eager. One down the right-hand sideline and then over the middle there. Perhaps they see something. Uh, there was a poor snap by the centre there. And I can probably guarantee you he tried to block first and snap second. Uh, I've done that enough times in my career. So, the Merseyside Nighthawks trying to take advantage of that early interception that they got if you just joined us. It's nil-nil here. 
bottom of your screen, two receivers, one running back in the backfield. Now they motion 21, and it, but it's a ha Routledge is going to keep it himself. And that's nice play from number 43, that Coventry player. We've called his name once, and we will again. It's Arthur Maney on the tackle. Beautiful work. Straight in there. Straight in there, exactly where he was going, right up that gap. Being left there by the Night Fox offensive line. That was a wonderful play there by the Falcons defense. He's playing defensive end, isn't he, Marnie? And it looks like yeah. they're, they're leaving him unblocked on the option because they're reading off him, but he's got the athletic ability to cut back he's inside and make the play. Very quick, man. Very, very quick. All right, let's see how that works. Murphy now in the backfield along with Routledge. They've got two, two receivers out both sides of the field now of Merseysides. It looks like uh, number 14 for Merseyside jumped. We'll wait for the call on that one. And that's Jordan Houghton. And again, both sides. Before the play began, ball start on the offence. Five yards, still third down. Lots, lots, lots of early jitters here, Carl. Lots of early jitters, uh, a lot of penalties. It's got to get out of this mindset now if anybody wants to win this ball game and, and get that ball into the end zone. So brings up a long third down, Nev. What do you do if you're Merseyside here? You look, I mean, they have this great bunch of receivers, don't they? They're very quick receivers. They've got a, they've got a set of six very, very good receivers. And honestly, that's the only thing to do now. But you've got a whole game to go after this. It's try now, but you've got a whole game to go. All right, so they do line up with one back in the backfield, two receivers to the top of your screen. So actually trips to the top of your screen. Routledge backs up. Look goes to his right and tries to run with the ball. And he's going to pick up about five yards before he's tackled there. Oh, it's that man again, Manny, who's just having a uh, Arthur Manny, who's just uh, made three tackles almost on the trot. And that's basic defense there. It's converge on the ball just because you've got off your block and the ball's gotten from you. Just chase it down, chase down that ball and take it down and help your teammates out. And that's just what he's done there. So fourth down, looks like Routledge is going to stay on the field for this one. So they are going to line up and go for it rather than go for the kick. They're about the 24-yard line, so could kick it if you've got a decent kicker, but they elect to stay on the field. Let's see if they try and draw Falcons offside. Or we'll actually get a snap of the ball. We do. Trips to the bottom of your screen, right-hand side. They go for the screen pass to Murphy. This time Murphy breaks a tackle, breaks another, and it looks like he's going to be very oh, close I think there's to a that first down, unless that ball's come out. Let's have a... Screen pass to Murphy. That's almost required. It looks like he's... Ah, the Falcons have recovered the ball. So, exchanging turnovers early in the first quarter. So, Merseyside get the interception. And then Murphy tries to get the first down on the fourth down, and actually the ball's turned over, uh, on, and it's a fumble in the end, but actually it would have been turned over if he hadn't have yeah. made that anyway. It's very key that this is it. This is the first two drives, and both teams need, uh, now need to realise that. Now the game starts. Now it's all about get rid of those mistakes, those little, little silly mistakes now. Drive that ball downfield and get, get that ball in the end zone. That's the name of the game. It really is. So after all of that, it looks like the Falcons are going to end up back where they started after the kickoff, which is about their own 12-yard line. So uh, we'll see what they can do on this drive. It's Watts still at the quarterback position. They have a spread out, and they will throw this one to Danny Burton on the left-hand side, and he picks up about five yards, but there is a flag down. Something very rare that we see. We see a receiver uh, blocking. Fair play. That's Devidas, number 83. We'll see whether the penalty is on him out there trying to help Danny Burton get those additional yards on the sideline. Holding, 83 on the offence. Half the distance to the goal, still first down. And that's why we don't ask receivers to do blocking, just in case you never know what's going to happen, really. <laughs> leave a, it to the pros. It's maybe. a 50-50. Yeah, leave it to the pros. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's half distance penalty to the goal, and that's going to take the Falcons back to their nine-yard line. They're going to line up in this spread again, with this time with trips to the top of your screen. One single receiver, David Ass to the bottom, Francis to the right-hand side of the quarterback. Referee's just checking an equipment issue with the left guard. There's Watts receiving the snap, looks to his right. This time goes to the short pass to Francis, difficult to bring down in open field, and he's broken a tackle and makes his way very close to a first down. We'll see where they mark it. Two penalties down, though, again, Nev. It's, it's one step forward, two steps back at the moment. It's just get a good play in there, get some good block, blocking scheme in there, but someone keeps making mistakes and bringing back this offense. But we'll have to see what's, who, who the flag is on first. There's two flags on the, on the field at the moment. And I can't imagine Noel's very happy about this right now. I can hear him yelling. Illegal block in the back, number one on the offense. Half the distance to the goal, still one. So that's Deera, number one. Uh, again, the receiver on that one. So, 
the Falcons, as you can see, are doing a no huddle offense at the moment, and it's a very quick offense. And at the moment, we're not seeing anything right now. There's, there's the first snap. down. Here we go with the run. This is Francis barreling his way, trying to get those extra yards. Picks up about three, maybe four on the carry. Marcus Francis doing what he does best: just up the gut, firing, firing through, fighting his way through many defenders, trying to scrape out those yards. It's interesting what they're doing with Watson, isn't it? They seem to be lining up with a more of a spread offense, giving him more of an opportunity to make passes than they did last week, which was really about ball management. Yeah. Well, of course, we all we all know in this. Oh, I think we have another flag. Looks like they're waving that one off. They're going to tuck, tuck that one back in, uh, back in the pants and ready to go again. <laughs> have we, have we had, a, had a play without a penalty yet? Oh, yeah. Second now and about 13 yards for these Leicester Falcons. Trips to the bottom of the screen. Watts goes to his right, and that is, looks like Devin Ass. Let's get a number for you. Out of bounds after a pickup of a small. I see that's Anna Conley, one of the NTU, uh, one of the NTU graduates this year, who's joined the Leicester Falcons to play summer football, and that's going to bring up a more manageable third and five. So a man exactly where he needs to be. It's a, a good receiver, a good throw there, and it's just it's plays like that are going to get us into the end zone. Empty set this time. Francis lined up as a slot back to the right, uh, to the top of your screen. There, you'll see him. Uh, whistle blows. We'll see what that is. Oh, that's taking off number 77 for another kit issue. One believes. So we'll see whether the refs flagged that one or whether they just say, "All right, well, we need him to sort out this kit. This is your wa one warning." Of course, just these days, if uh, you're given a warning and then just sent off for a play. This time they line up uh, Francis to the bottom of your screen. So it looks like the same play, but they've reversed it. So five receivers out. Watts on his own in the backfield. Again, short, quick pass. And this one's dropped. Some fantastic coverage there by uh, the Nighthawks going over to that side and keeping their man, man on him. Just getting in his head on that one. That's fantastic play there by the, d the defense from the Merseyside. Tom Jarrett not being able to... Uh, make the diving catch on that one which means it's going to bring up fourth down and we can see Danny Burton come on for the punt Danny Burton sponsored by Leicester Garden players this year for the Leicester Falcons have individual sponsors as well as team sponsors so we're going to give you a shout out of those as we go through the game yes it's <coughs> we're very thankful for our sponsors just wanted, wanted to be known that we're very, very thankful for our sponsors for helping us expand the game so I believe we've got uh, Shimanga back to receive this one. Let's see what we can do. Burton receives the punt. It's a big, booming, high kick. And Shimanga doesn't want any of it. But it rolls back. And they're trying desperately to get hold of the ball. And it looks like Leicester will recover this. By the looks of things, it hit a uh, Nighthawk player who was unbeknownst to the, where the ball was. And that is going to go to the Leicester Falcons. So here we are for the final signal from the refs now. Leicester obviously excited and think they've got it. What do you see, Nev? I can't see anything, but this could be an opportunity to Leicester to forget those last drives and finally get down there and get something moving on this drive. So let's see if they did recover the ball. We're just waiting for the referees to make a decision. And it looks like... The ball was the touched by the kicking team. Therefore, it's illegal touching. The ball goes back to the spot. First down, Merseyside. Oh. So it's touched by the kicking team. So Leicester touched the ball. Illegal touching. So Merseyside do retain possession on the punt from Danny Burton. Unfortunately, no not quite the uh, little Gordon miracle Gordon that we were hoping here for, for, for the Falcons here. But Merseyside, again, on point to do that. Let's see if they can make it into the end zone here with uh, less mistakes. Decent field position for Merseyside in the Falcons half already. And that's where they start their second possession. Remember the first one off the interception. Now some issues with the fun, uh, with the uh, punt. It gives them good field position again. This time they line up with Trips in the backfield. Just Martin, uh, uh, sorry, Trips down to the bottom of your screen. Just Martin in the backfield with Routledge. And it's that option again, and Routledge keeps it, looking for room up the left-hand side, and he's met, but only after he picks up about six Routledge yards. There's some good blocking happening here from the offensive line, moving out to that side, moving on, on over to block over those middle linebackers and such, making sure that they get as many yards as possible. So Routledge picks up six yards to open, uh, open this series. It's going to bring up second and four. 
And from what I'm looking at the uh, at the, at the uh, Mersey side here, they have a very healthy supply of, of offensive linemen today. Taylor Brown, you notice for defense, is playing linebacker. He has been playing middle linebacker, played middle linebacker in the last game. So he can come up and make those tackles. The tackle that time was actually made by Alex James of the Leicester Falcons. Routledge now with the same uh, option, but this time he does hand off to Martin, who's found a nice hole and barrels his way, keeps his feet, quick feet. Will he get to the end zone? And he's tackled, and it has to be a saving tackle from number 46, who is Ed Cooper. So Martin Murphy, last year's MVP, making big yardage on that, uh, that down, about 25 yards, rips one right up the middle. Here's the replay. And that's a fantastic move by the running back there, just pumping his legs, keep moving, keep his body moving, shaking off defensive players all the way up until the, th the three-yard line. Absolutely fantastic. Good work there. And also a good work by the offensive line, making that hole for him so he can get upfield. All right, we're going to bring you back live now. This is first and goal, and it's Routledge going to keep the ball, looking to get behind that big offensive line. Will he get in? Looks like he's there. There's the signal. So Merseyside strike first in this Premiership encounter, this Week 2 encounter, and it's 6 nothing with Routledge taking it in off uh, off the right-hand side. And it was just a straight-up quarterback follow, wasn't it? Just follow yep. those offensive linemen into the just end zone. those big boys in, moving their boys out of the way, getting low, getting their hands low, getting in there and moving the defensive line off the ball. That was that was very a fantastic move there by the offensive line. Right, so they're going to line up for the point after, which is going to be a one-point attempt. Snap is good, hold is good, and kick is way into the car park. If you're parked there, uh, you might want to check where you put your car. I always make sure I park all the way after the first couple of games. So that's Alex Eager that kicks the ball right through the uprights, and it's 7 nothing Merseyside. Never, you shocked? I am shocked. I am shocked. But mistakes are being made on both sides. Now it's about who can stop making these mistakes, and, you know, Merseyside, they... Uh, they they, they, they worked their way through it. They got the, the, what they needed to do. They got a good starting position on the field there, and they made it in, in for a touchdown. They did what is expected of a premiership team. All right, so we have ourselves a game with Merseyside. And, and again, we have to emphasize the fact Merseyside have been in the premiership. They've seen a lot of these good teams. Now, they've been around a lot. Leicester Falcons, it's their first year in the prem. You yeah. know, and, and the Merseyside Nighthawks, they're a good team. They've come in, they've scored. And really, it was Martin's 25-yard rip up the middle there that sat that one up. It's, this is a team who can very much sit where they are and take on the new boys, very much so. And I think they're going to be, definitely this is going to be the first big challenge for the Falcons. All right, so let's see whether the Falcons can answer. Again, we have got Tom Singleton-Wells back to receive this one along with Deera. We'll see uh, how this goes. Number 98 for Merseyside kicking off. That's Greg Williams. This one's a short one. That's a low kick. Goes to the... And it's going to roll out of bounds, actually. So we'll see whether Leicester asks for this to be re-kicked, which they can do, or they just might ask for the ball to be placed at the 40-yard line. So, a very standard drive coming up ahead. This is just going to be... going to have to fight for those yards and going to have to grind it out. It's going to be about getting that run game going. As we all understand that, it's about the run. You can throw and you can do all the... A little by the kicking team. The ball will be placed on the 30. First down. And a little bit of a break there for the Falcons. So the ball is going to be placed at the 30-yard line. They are not asking for a re-kick on this. Watts is coming back onto the field. And again, from that empty set, Francis not in the backfield. So, again, they're going for five receivers out. Watts on his own, goes for that short pass again. This time it is caught, right-hand side, makes a nice move. And that's number 15. We've called his name already, the ex NTU Teo Adakunli, who's making his presence felt with two catches so far. And that's... Uh, a gain of about 15 up the sideline. No penetration there by the defensive line. The O-line stood their ground on that one, kept the ends from getting around, and that was a fantastic pocket there for Empty set again as the Falcons go to hurry up off us. We saw a little bit of this, didn't we, against Sheffield, but not too much of it. Obviously, in the last two weeks, in the last two weeks, just as we take a little bit of a break from the action here, uh, right with a penalty snap. down. Ball star. Number three on the offense, five-yard penalty. Still, still first down. Still mistakes being made. Still very silly, very basic mistakes being made on both sides of the ball. So they go to the hurry up, but uh, obviously the snap count not communicated to Marcus Francis. 
Anyway, back to that empty set. Here's Watts. Looks to go to his left. Looks to go to Francis. And that's a great play. Well timed by the defensive back number 23, Johnny Weeks, who made the interception early on. And the ball floated a little bit high there for Francis. It did. It did. And Johnny Weeks was all over it on that one. And fair play to him. That was some good coverage. He knew right knew where it was going. He followed his steps. And there was absolutely great, fantastic coverage there by Merseyside. You can see on the replay here, Weeks arriving just as the ball arrives. With Francis, no chance chance and Weeks delivers a blow I bet he was satisfied with that one but the two do shake hands as the ball we go back to live play and that's in and out of the hands of Weeks so uh, we'll catch you straight back up the ball was incomplete but this uh, Johnny Weeks all over the field he is he is uh, he looks like an absolute weapon for this offense uh, this defense offense defense <laughs> sorry it's been a while since I've been on here but this is what Merseyside are doing I think they're getting the rust off now those cobwebs have gone and they're now getting into their groove, and Leicester really needs to start doing the same. Johnny Weeks playing that as we have an injury on the field, so um, we hope that that player's OK. We'll get you a number as soon as we can. But Johnny Weeks playing that cover one safety position, and he's just managing to run sideline to sideline, a bit like yeah. Taylor Brown did last year for the yeah. Leicester Falcons. Yeah, definitely. And it's working, it's working, and you know, what, what, what ain't broke, don't fix. And I think uh, it's going to work well for him. So this is where the Falcons are going to really have to start to manipulate the game. They're going to have to modify what they're doing in order to compensate for this. And it's an interesting strategy to come at. I mean, last week we saw, you know, at Leicester against Sheffield. They came out on that first drive, drove down the field, uh, just with Francis I mean, handing the ball off. Yeah. And, and, but they've not come out this week with the same game plan. It looks like going empty set, trying to get the ball on these short passes into the flats. And so far... Let's be honest, it's not working as well as last week's did, does it? No, definitely not. But it's only the first quarter, the only first couple of drives, and there are other fundamental things that need to be fixed first. But once they get into their groove, and as they will do eventually, we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. So well, here comes the offence. All right, so we're back uh, live. The injured player has now been taken off the field. Good work by the physios. So Leicester Falcons now with a critical third and 15 after that hit from Weeks and then the ball in and out of his hands again. Trips to the bottom of your screen. Again, what's in this empty set? All receivers out. Francis not on the field now, so we'll see how this one goes as lots of time goes short to the left-hand side. Trying to get extra running room down that sideline, but I think he's going to be short of the first down, and that is Natal Molero, another NTU Renegades receiver. So uh, the NTU Renegades, my team, uh, making a big impact, both with Adekunle down the sideline and now Natal Malero, and it's first down. That's also, I know I keep calling to it, but it's also fantastic work by the offensive line. They're not getting anything past right now. Absolutely right. Nev, that's a handoff this time to Lewis Hyde, who is uh, NTU Renegades uh, <laughs> recruit. So it's the NTU Renegades show so far on this drive does a good job so he picks up three yards and that's going to bring up second and seven so we go from here we're going to see what, what the offense do from here maybe the the groove is starting to show now maybe they're getting into their stride Watts looks to his right looks for Lewis Hyde in the flat makes a nice move cuts back to the inside and that's going to be picked up by the defensive backs not a lot there for Lewis he's going to lose a couple of yards on that one so once again, the Nighthawks are just all, o all over on that defense. That's a fantastic swarm to the ball. Way that the mannerisms they have on their defense of just because just one person's there, they're all over it. And that's absolutely what you need on defense. First player there was Will McEwen, who's a GB defensive back for these, uh, uh, these Merseyside Nighthawks, uh, making his presence felt on that one. Referees now at around the 40-yard line, just having a bit of a chin wag about this play. Not, can't see any flags on the field, Nev. I don't, I don't see any flags. Uh, I think it was a, it was picked up by the Nighthawks, and that was a fumble and a pick up by the Nighthawks. Wow! So, so again, a a fumble by the Falcons. We had an whistle, but the ball was recovered by Black before the inadvertent whistle. Therefore, Merseyside have the ball. First down. Ah, oh, so Lewis Hard will be really disappointed with that as his second run out for these Leicester Falcons he gets the ball ripped away from him thought the, thought the play was dead uh, there was a whistle blown but yeah. evidently the ball came out and uh, Merseyside take over so another turnover for these Falcons and all it is now is a matter of Falcons keep their heads up keep their heads up there's still a whole game of football to play and the mistakes are mistakes they happen you just always go just to the next play always on to the next play the next drive there's plenty of time left in this game 
So the Nighthawks now, last time they were able to exploit the turnover with uh, Routledge running it in for seven points. If you just joined us, it's 7 nothing here to Merseyside. This time they have Shimanga in the backfield with Routledge, number 17. Other than that, you've got receivers to the bottom of your screen. Let's see what Merseyside dial up here. And it's a shotgun snap and going deep over the middle to number 21. But that one is over the head of everybody. A little bit keen on that one was the quarterback. It was absolutely nowhere near anybody with triple coverage there by the uh, Falcons defense. Trying to get the ball to Dominic Wu over the middle there on the post pattern. And I think what the quarterback's seeing is you, you can see that the uh, Leicester Falcons are lining up quite close to the line of scrimmage. And that means they've got no one back. So Routledge is taking his chances deep. Maybe trying to deal with the threat of that uh, that running back who is just ploughing through the defensive line. Yeah, you've got the one-two punch, haven't you? Shimanga and Martin. Martin's the bigger back. Shimanga in the backfield this time with Routledge. Uh, snap comes out. This time it is going to be a handoff to Shimanga who takes it up the middle and is met early and quickly for little or no gain on that one. And that's just the that is the defense, defensive line of the Falcons doing what they do best is shutting down that that run game. So that's going to bring up third down. The, the Falcons' defense standing firm so far in this series. See whether Routledge can get the ball to one of these playmakers that we know they've got. Shimanga's still on the field this time in the backfield with Routledge, but you would expect them to go to the air. Calling out plays is the Europe player, Routledge. Audible to his team. Falcons threatening blitz, and they do bring six. This time it's a screen to Shimanga in space. Cuts back to his right twists and turns his way into space and this is dangerous for the Falcons they just tiptoe him out of bounds but Shimanga in space so difficult to bring down it's very quick he's just he's just a limpet through there it's absolutely fantastic there just weaving and weaving from one side to the other and doing exactly what he needs to do to get those yards from Merseyside so they do convert on third and ten and a beautifully designed play the blitz taking advantage of that aggressive defense from these Falcons and so Merseyside with a new set of downs at the, we'll call it the 33. This time they hand off again and it's, it's Shimanga breaking one up the middle and he's gone for the and touchdown. In for six is Shimanga with a big hole up the middle. Didn't have to dance or juke straight up the gut and that's six points. And that's what it looks like when an offense just clicks. That is just the offensive line, the quarterback, the running backs, the wide receivers, everyone doing their job on that one to earn themselves six points. That was a good job there by the Merseyside Nighthawks. So uh, we're, the Merseyside Nighthawks have exploited both of those turnovers, the, the interception and then the fumble, and has suddenly jumped out to an early lead of two touchdowns. And we'll see whether they can convert on this uh, extra point. But this is... Um, dangerous now for these Falcons there's the kick and it's up and again it's a good kick so uh, the uh, number 10 Alex Eager converting on the point after and it's now 14 to Merseyside Nighthawks and, the Falcons and nothing for the Falcons the Falcons haven't been in this position for a very long time in a very very long time so this is something they need to rectify themselves this is something they need to make peace with if they're going to go forward now and get the points needed to bring this game into into contention yeah, and maybe it's a good thing to be down early on in the season. Yes. You know, this is, as we've said, it's the first time they've been in the Premiership. Yep. And, you know, there will be challenges. It's a different division than Div 1. These teams can all play, and we know that they're, they're well-drilled, and we know that Merseyside is an excellent program, and they're showing their colours today. Definitely, definitely. And if I, if I know uh, Coach Noel at halftime, he's going to be having a bit of a scream. And we always found that after that bit of a scream is when we pull it out and go do exactly what we need to do. So Tom Singleton Wells and Deera back to receive again as the kickoff is going to come from these Merseyside Night Talks. Matthew O'Connell with the kick. This time it's deep to Tom Singleton Wells. Picks it up at his 10. Looks to cut back into the middle. Makes one man miss. Makes another man miss. Cuts back into the middle. That's a nice run back. Some good big hits going in as well. And that will bring them up to about the 28 yard line. Fantastic work there by TSW. Cutting back, going back. Very Again, very small. Very good at those cutting and getting back and moving forward and getting those nut yards that are needed. Again, the offense is going to come on and they've got the whole field to work with here. They've got to get down to that end zone and get this rust off them and get themselves moving forward. So, Noel Kassar and the offensive coordinator with the Leicester Falcons talking to this team, willing them on. 
They really need to uh, do something on this drive. Again, we're still in the first quarter, so it's still early days, but they're 14 points down and looking to make something happen on this drive is Watts, who hands off to Francis. And again, those linebackers swarming to the ball, pushing that pile back as those Merseyside lids come in. Not much there for Francis on that one. And you can see that Merseyside have done their homework on, on this offense. They they know if there's Ma if Ma Martin Francis is in the backfield, they know they need to be wary of him. And that's what those linebackers are doing. As soon as they see him with the ball, they're just shooting straight in to take him down because they know once he gets up a, a load of speed, Ma Martin Francis is hard to bring down. Francis limping off the field as Adam Edwards uh, runs onto the field to replace him. This time Watts looks to throw, and this again is a short pass out to Adekunli, who picks up, again, good yardage on that right-hand sideline. Obviously, they've, they've been able to exploit the fact that these cornerbacks are giving them a bit of a cushion on that right-hand side. It is, and, it's, uh, and from there you just make the hole bigger and bigger and bigger until you, you're just big enough to get through there and start scoring some points. It's working those weaknesses on the defense. Third and three then, manageable for Watts. No Francis in. This time is going to go to Natal Malero, who's playing number eight. Dances, weaves, cuts back to the middle. Difficult man to bring down. So it's a lot of action east and west, but nothing there for Natal. Tackle made, and that will bring up a fourth down. Now this is just a, a defense again. I'm, so, I'm saying this for the, the defense, most side defense. They are just all over. They swarm. As soon as they see someone's got the ball, they're just sharks in the water and all over, all over making sure that no one's getting any yards here. It's a fantastic defense I'm seeing here. Yeah, there is some quality at that linebacker position, isn't there? Those, those intermediate passes just haven't been able to get much going. Nevertheless, it's fourth down. Looks like they're going to punt this one. Danny Burton on to kick this. Is this somewhere you would see a fake or is it too early, Nev? I would say it's too early. There's the snap. Snap is good. Burton with a good kick. It's a good Shimanga kick by Danny. Shimanga doesn't want any of it and it's going to take a Merseyside bounce. But it's still a decent kick. Uh, bring the Merseyside Nighthawks out uh, with a 14-0 lead and the ball at their own 35-yard line. So, once again, Merseyside are on the ball and they've now got the whole field to work with. Let's see what they do now with a, with a proper drive, with a, with a full-on meaty drive to see if they can really work against this Falcon defence. So, Merseyside with a 14-0 uh, lead, what do they do here? They want to protect the lead or get those additional points on the board? If it was me, it would, it's, it's get up. Get up in the first half of the first quarter. You're in that groove. Don't Certainly don't come out of that. Once, you're, once that train is rolling, you don't want to stop it. So the run seems to be working well for the Merseyside Nighthawks. They've had a run from Routledge for the first score and then uh, Shimanga busting up the middle for the other one. This time they hand off to actually it's Routledge who keeps it and he's going to scamper his way for uh, another first down on the right-hand side. So the Falcons really need to do something to stop this option, option running game. Yeah, a, a dual-threat quarterback is something very hard to deal with and he, he's making it work. Right, he's making it work and... If it's working, but there needs to be some changes done on the Falcons' defense here to start quelling these leaks and stuff that the fact that the uh, not, not, not Nighthawks are just exploiting. So Marcus Francis, we can see close to us here on the sideline, getting some help from the physio, and uh, we hope that he makes a return soon. Exciting player to watch. Yeah, fantastic player to watch. I really want to see him get, get into the groove. Here. Time out. I keep saying that. Mersey side. They're first. So Merseyside with a timeout. Still in the first quarter, Nev. It's been an exciting one, hasn't it, with two touchdowns. First time, really, we've seen Leicester down. Yeah. It's, it's going to be an eye-opener for the Falcons here. It's going to be a definite eye-opener. And from this, you either learn or you fail. And I know these boys, and I know they're going to learn from this. They're definitely going to learn from this, and they're going to improve. But Dr. Dad to improve. That's what they do best. Gives us a chance to talk about one of the sponsors today, Sutherland Co. They're a bespoke specialist lawyer firm in the heart of Leicester. They're born out of a long-standing West Midlands practice, which was the family practice, and a progressive, dynamic East Midlands law firm. Sutherland Co.'s goal is to be one of the leading commercial boutique law firms, not only in the Midlands, but in the whole of England and Wales. And they want you, as their client, to be a client for a long time. They want to understand your business as it is now, but importantly, what it could be. And they're going to work with you, that Sutherland Co., commercial advice and answers to the plethora of complex questions you may have as we're brought back to the game now first and 10 for Merseyside this time handoff to the Martin going to the right hand side picking up his blocks nicely 
gets bullied out of bounds there by number 42. Makes a nice hit in the end, but it's a good pickup. James Beckett on the tackle. But James Beckett is an absolute workhorse for this defense. A, a linebacker with just short, but he's big and he's strong. And he's an absolute workhorse. He'll get things done for you. When nothing else is done, you can go to James, and he is so reliable. So Martin Moore patient behind those blocks on that right-hand side to bring up second and six for these Merseyside Nighthawks with this 13-0 lead. Routledge dropping back and again looks to the sideline. This for Eads and he does come back to the ball, makes the reception. Can they get him to the ground? They do. So Adam, uh, sorry, it, that is Alex Eager who they've been trying to get to and they do, makes a good read on the ball, comes back to the football, slightly underthrown and makes a good play to, to pick that one up. And the QB was under some serious pressure there. If you saw the ball come out, there was a nice bit of wobble on it. There was some pressure there, but he managed to get through and his receivers did exactly what they needed to do to get that ball and make some yardage out of that. Tom Singleton Wells with his hands full on that one. He does rally to make the tackle. This time they go to Martin right up in the middle and he's barreling his way and pushing his way as far as he can go. Picks up another four yards. So let's look at the replay on the pass. You can see Singleton Wells not able to locate the ball as Eager goes back to get it and then Wells has to rally to drag Eager down to the ground. That one-on-one -on -one matchups absolutely critical now that uh, That is the Leicester, end of the first quarter. That it's critical that Leicester managed to shut down this Alex Eager running back. But that's the first quarter, Nev. What are your impressions? Well, the impression this is you're now at this point with how Leicester are playing. You're now at a point now. This is this this is where you need to turn it around. This is where you need to make sure you're making no more mistakes and working hard to make sure you're getting into the end zone. Because from here, if you don't turn it around here, and I can really see Merseyside in getting into it now and going further. It's now up to the Falcons to see how they want the rest of this game to pan out. Lots of games going on around the country. We'll bring you those scores uh, as soon as we can. Uh, but this one is an exciting one, not least because we've not seen, in about three years, we've not seen Leicester Falcons in this position. No. 20, we talked in the pre-game show how they've 29 wins in the last three years, zero losses, one draw. They're very, very rarely behind, aren't they? No, and in a way, maybe that's a good thing because uh, winning all the time, you yeah, get a bit boring. But if you do lose, it, 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 it humours you a bit more, and you understand. So after that big play from Eager uh, downfield, Merseyside Nighthawks knocking on the door early in this first quarter. Routledge this time keeps it with a big hold to his right-hand side, cuts to his right, looks to get in, but that's a nice saving tackle. And that's Tom Singleton-Wells coming in to make the tackle against Routledge with a big hit and nearly upended him. And that looks like a tackle that he wants to make up for that, that previous catch there on that one. I think he's, he's done well on that one. Definitely a few high fives there for uh, TSW. That was a fantastic tackle. So, looked like Routledge had space there on the right-hand side, but Singleton Wells denies him. So it's going to bring up... They managed to get the first down, however, on that. So it's going to bring up first and goal from the three. Routledge now behind a heavy set. Keeps it himself. Same play, right-hand side. And, and that's going to go in. So, it's Merseyside all the way with another score. Straight into the first, second play into the second, the second quarter, and it's another score. Merseyside are very much on their way here and it's again it's up to the Falcons to ch change how this game's going to pan out. The Merseyside are just going to keep on cruising the way they're doing it now. And they do seem to be able to have their will at the moment with this uh, Leicester Falcons defense don't they? they they're, they're making yards through the air but they're also making yards on the ground with Routledge in this difficult option run as uh, number 10 comes on to kick this extra point and again he's been perfect so it's Alex Eager who made the big reception and now he comes on and kicks the extra point and that's going to bring up the score 21 to Merseyside Nighthawks, Leicester Falcons 0 and the Falcons now really do need to make something happen. Yes, yes definitely. It's, uh, you know, we're seeing less mistakes now on, on both sides of the ball. The, the Nighthawks are showing a lot less mistakes. They're now definitely getting where they need to be but as for the Falcons, they're still trailing, they're still suffering with mistakes and and such like that and struggling to try and work out this 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 Merseyside team but now is the time the second quarter is now the time for them to, to get something going get a story going with these guys because if not these guys are going to go all the way to the end of these Merseyside Nighthawks so we're getting ready for the kickoff this has become familiar now isn't it with Deera and Tom Singleton Wells back there and uh, number 90 kicking this one off uh, Matthew O'Connell 
getting plenty of kickoff practice. And it's uh, getting ready for a nice bit of special teams here. Let's see, uh, let's see what uh, Coach Noel brings out of the bag. So, so far, they've managed to shut down the run from Francis. And they've managed to shut down the passing attack as well as Tom Singleton Wells takes a look at this one. But again, this one's going to roll out of bounds. It's the second time that's happened for the Seahawks. So we'll see if this one will be placed at the 30. By the looks of things, we have a flag. Illegal procedure. And of course, the, team, the ball will be placed on the 30. First down, Leicester. And of course, shutting down the run game for Leicester is absolute key for trying to clip their wings as such. <laughs> Puns, I've got them. And such like that. It's what needs to be done. Because it... This is a running league. This is all about running and having that ground game. If you have a, a good, strong ground game, like the Merseyside do, then you have success. You have success. And the Falcons, they have a run game. They definitely have a run game. But again, that rust is just lingering on them. They just need to get that off and get moving. So it's um, the Merseyside Nighthawks on the field but let's see Leicester Falcons now with the first and 10 at the starting at the 30 yard line this time Watts goes out to Tom Jarrett looking for some space keeping his feet He's wrestled out of bounds but Tom, decent pick up of a gain of about position. 9 or 10 we'll see whether they give him the first down on that and a, a quicker correction there I did just say Seahawks for some reason which was duffed on my part here's of course the Merseyside Nighthawks <laughs> my bad I apologize to the Nighthawks on that one and anyone listening and the Seahawks, of course, and the Seahawks. I don't care about the Seahawks. I'm a Broncos <laughs> fan. I hate the Seahawks. <laughs> All right, here we go. Oh, and that's that's almost tipped by the uh, Merseyside Nighthawks, but this one's going to be flagged play before it can, can start. Before the play began, bold start, number 17, five yards. And again, still one. That, that rust is still there. Those mistakes are still coming in. Those simple mistakes can really cost you. And in a game when you're down zero to 21, and especially in the second half, you can't be having these mistakes. So Noel Kassar, we can see, is holding his head in his hands on the sideline with these penalties and mistakes. So every time they have some yards, they get driven back again. This time they go to Adekunli, and that is out of the hands of Adekunli, and then dangerously falls incomplete. Michael Houghton was uh, scanning that one to see whether he could pick that one up, but just arrived a little bit late. I got to uh, speak from my, my, my mate Teo there, uh, Ali Connolly. I uh, absolutely love this boy. Played with him in Hertfordshire, and I've got a, a lot of time for that boy. I really do. So Brad Thompson, you will have noticed, is now in at quarterback as he goes to his uh, left-hand side, and that's into coverage. And Weeks with his second interception, and in space, looks to make some yardage up the right-hand side as the flag goes down. Weeks with his second pick, this time of Brad Thompson who they brought in to see if they could make something happen. And the thing that does happen is that uh, Weeks gets another interception. That's another deep ball, and was it wise to go deep so soon with the new quarterback? I mean, uh, that's, he has got a hell of an arm, and he is a hell of a player. But maybe that was a bit too soon, maybe there. I don't know. I'm not the offensive coordinator, but... Looking on the replay there, you can see the triple coverage of the receiver. I think they're trying to get it to uh, Tom Jarrett. But weeks all over that one, and uh, he is a weapon, isn't he? In the backfield. Defense number six, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Well, well they're going to call that one back. So the flag was a pass interference call. It's going to. Uh, it's going to take that interception off the board, and the Falcons got away with that one. And by the, by the looks of things, uh, the Falcons have just lost their centre. Uh, uh, Simon Charles, a dear friend of mine who I love dearly, but it, uh, it looks like he's going to be taken over by uh, Johnny Strur, the, I can't pronounce Johnny's last name, Hopwell as I know him, who's going to be taking over uh, duties at centre. So, uh, pros and cons for the Falcons there. Obviously, they get to retain the ball, but they do lose their starting centre, so we'll see how that impacts, and that's a good spot, Nev. Yeah. On that, so new quarterback in, new centre in. Yep. Uh, but they do manage to retain the ball, and uh, things are getting very tricky for these Falcons now. 21 nil down in this one. Yeah, definitely. It's everything's not going quite well the Falcons' way today. Uh, maybe this half is, is is foregone, and maybe it's time to just dig your heels in and make sure no one else scores. We'll just have to see. Trips to the bottom of the screen this time as Thompson hands off to Lewis Hyde, who spins and jukes his way, trying to find additional space. It's finally dragged down, but there is a, well, still running, but the play is blown dead. Lewis Hyde, difficult runner to bring down, as I know from NTU, is a great kid, young kid, just graduating this year. 
and is just a fantastic athlete. Started off playing defence, uh, and then was uh, picked up by the Leicester Falcons and making an impact now. Illegal back. block in the back, 83 Green, 10 yard penalty, spot of the foul. Still second down. Another penalty. Oh, really holds in these this Falcon this Falcon team right Correction. now. First flags. down. And that's Devadas again, um, who is gets caught. So that's the second penalty on him for holding. And we're hearing the words penalty and Davy does quite a lot here, Carl, by the sounds of things. Yeah, second time he's been called, Nev, you're quite right. All right, so we've got trips to the bottom of the t of the picture and, and twins up top. So it's uh, Thompson in the backfield on his own. Quick pass out to what looks like, I think he's had a Connolly there on the sideline. So they've gone to that a number of times and had success with it, albeit for fairly moderate yards. That's but that's going to pick up a second and 12. But it's always the same thing. You, you, you're going to throw out, get a couple of yards, and then it stalls. You know, what are we going to see different here? What, what can we see that's different here from the Falcons? Empty set as Brad Thompson warming up that arm. Pumps to his left, but goes to his right. And Adam Connolly was open, but overthrown. That's some good work there by, by Adam Connolly. There. Some, he was where he needed to be, unfortunately. Overthrown for him on that one. That would have been, that would have been a touchdown if he had caught it. But it would have, should have, could have. It's not going to do today. Zazinski, number 39, was on the coverage there. That might be something they go back to. Looked like Adekunle had the measure of him for pace. We'll see whether they come back to that. Thompson, now with third and 12, will want to convert here to go into the half with at least an opportunity to uh, to get in the end zone. Thompson dropping back, works his feet, finds Adekunle open. Good catch, and that's very close to a first down. So well-designed play. Um, and Adekunle just sitting in that zone, wasn't he? Just waiting for the ball, and Thompson guns it to him. Fantastic. And, of course, there was a good move there by the defence, working their way, keeping him covered. Make sure there was no more yards gained on that one. But maybe, are we starting to see? I'm not going to say anything here for the Falcons. I may jinx it, and I don't want to do that. Well, definitely a couple of consecutive first downs here. Got lucky, obviously, on the pick, but now Thompson with that second chance, making it count. This time picks up a low snap and hands off to Hyde who uh, barrels his way up the middle for about a game of four or five. Fantastic work again from, from the Merseyside uh, linebackers there, getting stuck in, helping up their defensive line, who are, I'm not going to say, are struggling at the moment against this offensive line for the Falcons. These are some big boys that they're dealing with. Second and six, maybe seven, for these Leicester Falcons as they try and get back into this one. Thompson goes to Adekunle again on the sideline, caught and still on his feet. But this time he goes down as the ball looks to be coming loose. So Oda Kunli, uh, again managed to get the better of Zizinski on that one. That matchup now critical for them. We may just, just about have a first down or just short. So Oda Kunli, another one of those NTU uh, graduates. And third and inches coming up now. Let's see what Thompson can dial up here. Does he go to the ground here with Lewis or do you take it to the air? They're going to give it to Lewis Hyde. Tries to duck underneath, but that's line, good defence. The D-line broke through exactly when they need to. Merseyside made it through, knowing exactly where that could have led. That could have led to a touchdown. And that was fantastic work by the Merseyside D-line on that one, breaking through, knowing exactly what was coming. So that's Pete Sandham, who was the first man there, number 47, from his defensive end position. They're going to go for it here on fourth and two. So trips to the top of the screen. They're trying to get these Merseyside Night Dogs offside, but they're prepped. Thompson now with the snap, takes it, looks, got pressure coming off the edge, manages to avoid it and puts one up into the end zone and Weeks with the play to bat that down and it's going to be a turnover on downs. Again, it was Pete Sandon with the pressure on Brad Thompson as Brad had to find some room to his right-hand side but couldn't get the ball into the end zone. Unfortunately, not there. The Nighthawks were all over there. By the looks of things, we have a Nighthawk down in the end zone. And here come the uh, here come medical staff to help him out. So Michael Houghton, uh, actually it's Michael Houghton. I've been saying it's his skin. It's actually Michael Houghton who's been playing number 39 against oh. uh, Ada Kunli. I've been looking at the wrong roster. <laughs> So that's Michael Houghton who's down, so we hope he's okay. I was wondering, is there two Pete Sandums? Because uh, <laughs> that's, that's, that's one of our linebackers. Exactly. So it's Michael Houghton who's been, you'll notice he's been having that matchup with Ada Cunley, number 15. So it's been him and Ada Cunley working uh, against each other. Yeah. And he goes down, but Leicester Falcons physios on the field. And, and what does that mean for the team now? I mean, they have the turnover on downs. They make some good yards, you know. They get the running game get going a little bit with Lewis Hyde. And, you know, they get the passing attack going with Brad Thompson, but not able to... Um 
to capitalise on it. Now, now is the time. It, it's to, they, need, they need to keep their heads high. That was a, produ a productive drive. It, you know, they needed to take that and work harder on it. It worked. Keep those parts that work. Keep them in there and keep it moving. You know, they made it up to the 20-yard line on that one. Next time, you're going to go all the way into the end zone. It's just about keeping your morale up. Keep your head up. Keep the off. The offensive line are doing a phenomenal job right now for the Falcons and say it's now time to now punch it into the end zone. Now's the time to really, really work hard against this this fantastic Merseyside defense. Quite right, Nevik. This gives a chance uh, uh, to talk about uh, another one of our sponsors here for the Leicester Falcons, the Growth Partners, a mission to make employers' lives easier and make employers' working environments a happier and healthier space for businesses to thrive. Growth Partners' vision is to aspire to build the UK's number one employee engagement platform that gives UK businesses of all sizes access to affordable expert level services. That's Growth Partners, one of the sponsors today of the Leicester Falcons. So our injured player number 39 is slowly getting to his feet. That's Michael Houghton. They've got him now up and he's taking a slow walk back to the sideline. So we will be able to get things started here in Leicester. Again, it's going to be the Merseyside Nighthawks with this three-touchdown lead, which has surprised you, I think, Nev. Yes, it has. It has. It has surprised me. Maybe uh, this is this is the eye opener that the Falcons need to realise that again. This is the prem. This is a different kettle of fish to Division One. This is where you have to make your mark, and of course. You're, never going to, you're not going to be perfect in the Prem. You're never going to be perfect in the Prem. Yeah, it's going to be made of blood, sweat and tears. And today, there's going to be some blood. There's going to be some tears. But it needs to be done. It's going to humble you and make you a better team. All right, so these Merseyside Nighthawks are going to pick up at the 20-yard line, their own 20-yard line. So it was a decent drive for Leicester, but no points on the board. Routledge, again, who's managed the team well so far, takes the snap. This time, it's Shimanga again, who's very nifty. He's finding space. He's so quick with those feet as a penalty does go in, but that is Shimanga again on the run. Shimanga with the carry again. We'll see what the penalty is. He's a, he's, he's a slippery character. He's definitely a slippery character, and he's weaving his way past that, 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 that impressive defensive line and working his way through. He's finding the cracks and working his way. Played against him when he played in Div Locking 1 and I was still playing. Number 10. 10 yards from the spot of the foul, still first down. So that's a block in the back from the receiver, Alex Eager. Uh, so that's going to let uh, let the Falcons off the hook on first down. But yeah, Shimanga, very slippery runner, played against him myself and very difficult to bring down and tremendously fast and got that burst of speed. You know, up to speed very quickly and then able to exploit the gaps on the field. So difficult player to play against and they've used him well today. I'm looking forward to seeing what the Nighthawks do here and so seeing if the Falcons could pull something out of the hat. First and 15 then as Routledge this time keeps it himself on a good read because it is Routledge with the ball. Uh, so that has actually, it looks like a whistle was blown early. There's a flag on the field and everyone looks to have been fooled, including the refs, on the, uh, on the option play. Because so Routledge says, well, I had the ball, guys. So uh, the referees are obviously going to have to have a chat about this one, but it looks like an inadvertent whistle that blew the play dead. So that was a fake, and uh, I would say it was really, really good, because everyone's confused. Even I was confused on that one. I was following the running back on that one, number three. And, uh, well, well, we'll see what happens here. I might have to open up the rule book on this one, see what happened. Penalty's still down now. I wonder whether that was uh, a high hit, maybe, on number three, but he didn't, he didn't actually have the ball. So we'll see, see what the ref says. There is no flag on the field. However, we do have an inadvertent whistle. We have to replay the down. So Routledge says, come on, guys, it's hard enough to run these run options without you, <laughs> without you missing the play. <laughs> but they're going to start again from first and 15 and pretend nothing ever happened. That's a do-over. That's a do-over. So... Let's start that again. Shall Routledge we? fooling everyone. We'll have to make sure those refs are of eagle-eyed. <laughs> uh, we've got Martin and Shimanga now in the backfield. Routledge in the shotgun, takes the snap. This time he does hand it off to Shimanga up the middle. And again, it's that man after a gain of six right, yards. It's the Coventry exit. It's Shemanga Arthur Marnie that makes the tackle on that one from his defensive end position. And t looking at the offensive line for, for the Nighthawks, they're doing a good job today working for that, those running backs. With their dual threat running backs and the fact that their quarterback can really move himself, the offensive line are working really hard today. 
Second and eight for these Nighthawks. High snap, Shimango working to his right-hand side, finds space, and the ball is out. And it looks like the Falcons have it. Let's see whether we can get, let's see whether we can get confirmation. Waiting for the signal from the referees. And it looks like a Falcons ball, and it is. Let's look on the replay. Nev, the ball's going to the right-hand side there, and it looks like it's just ripped out, flies out up into the air, and lands nicely for, is it that man again, number 43? It looks like it. That's beautiful. Well, that's quick reactions there by the, the Falcon defense. And now the offense really has an opportunity to turn around this, this, this rather poor first, first quarter. You know, this is now their chance to get that groove going. And I know I keep saying that word, but I'm going to keep saying it again because I can't think of anything else. But this is absolutely the time now for the Falcons to get a score on the board and, be, and make this game theirs. All right, what can Brad Thompson and Lewis Hyde do? We've not seen Marcus Francis worryingly since that injury took him off the field. The physio is working on him, but Lewis Hyde in at running back with the backup duties as Thompson goes out to Burton, who makes one man miss, two men miss, and uh, works his way to the five yard, uh, for five yards. That's very good work there by Danny Burton there. Very, very, very quick, very, very good on those cuts and very, very, very good on getting those yards. So they've gone to that hurry up offense again. So it's going to be second down. Try and get you back to the live action as quick as we can. This one to Adakunli. And he makes a catch. It's a nice tackle this time. They've had to bring on another defensive back, uh, Vijaz Masoon, making the tackle on that one. And that's another first down for Leicester. That's absolutely fantastic. This is, and this works on the last drive before those mistakes. This is what you need to do. You need to chip away at that defense. So Leicester now driving towards the end of this second quarter. This time Lewis Hyde works his way to the edge, finds the edge, and a burst of speed to Lewis Hyde! And there he goes into the end zone! And that is a 23-yard scamper from the XNTU running back and linebacker and president Lewis Hyde on his debut for Leicester, taking that one to the house. Fantastic work on that one, absolutely brilliant working, working upfield. That's a fantastic job by everyone there that needed to happen, and that was straight in for that touchdown. This is what the Falcons need. Now going for two, this is, this is what the Falcons need now to bring it back to a competitive game. All right, so the Falcons are on the scoreboard from the rookie player of Lewis Hyde in his first game. They're going to go for two here, so Lewis Hyde and Brad Thompson in the backfield. Leicester like to go for two, spread set. Thompson looks to his left, goes left, but nothing, nothing. there. Not sure whether the receiver knew the ball was coming. So the score is going to remain Merseyside 21, Leicester Falcons 6, and they're on the board, Nev. Good news. Good news, good news. And that's it. That's your first step. And from here, again, it's up to the Falcons to make sure they go that other step. They keep moving up that ladder with more and more scores, less mistakes going from here. But again, Merseyside are doing a cracking job at the moment. Maybe, they, are their defense getting tired? We don't know. But right now, there's a few mistakes there made by Merseyside and the, the Falcons capitalized. So let's see where we go from here and certainly into the second half. All right, so game's becoming more competitive now. Brad Thompson on the field, Lewis Hyde making a difference, Adam Connolly making a difference. So they're getting the offense going if they can cut those mistakes down. But this ball's going to come back to Merseyside and we know they've got some weapons. Let's see what they can do as we get closer towards half time. First time really we've seen the uh, return unit on for Merseyside. This, yeah, yeah. Well, hopefully we'll see it a lot more. Well, you never know. You know, this is American football. You can't guarantee anything. So we've got Alex Eager back and also Shimanga back. So two very dangerous receivers back in the uh, back to return this one. Danny Burton with the kickoff duties. And they're just going to scoot that one, almost like an onside. It looked like they were trying to go with an onside, but that's going to be an illegal formation on the kick. And so it's either a re-kick or it's going to come out to the 30. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what happened there. It's, uh, is it another situation of one step forward, two, two steps back? Interesting call to go for an onside kick on that play. What do you think, Nev? Good, good play calling or too early? Maybe too early. Or met, definitely, I'm thinking maybe too early. Easy with hindsight. Oh, yeah. Against the kicking team. Five yards added to where the ball went out of bounds. First down, Merseyside. All right, so this time it's a uh, legal procedure, and they're going to bring it out to the Merseyside. They're going to have good starting field position, albeit in their own half, but very close to Falcons' territory. So bringing that one out to the 39. 
And this will it's be very clever here now for the Nighthawk to just run, run, run down the clock and end this in a touchdown. Trips to the top of the screen, one receiver to the bottom of your screen, Routledge and Martin in the backfield. It's been very effective so far. It's been good things. Uh, but turnovers on the last series. Let's see what they can do. This time Martin keeps the ball. And he's tough to bring down. He's strong. Keeps his feet. And maybe picks up uh, three. So contact early in the backfield. But Martin keeps his feet for a gain of three. That was a good, good, good move there by the uh, defense for the Falcons. That's converging on, on the ball. They understand that this, this young lad is not going to go down at all. One person is not going to bring this young lad down. He is just too quick. Number three is just way too quick for one person to bring down. And now they're starting to clue on. So again, Martin and Routledge in the backfield. This time Routledge rolls to his right, looks for the short pass and completes that one. And that is complete to number 21, who is Dominic Wu. And he's wrestled out of bounds. It looks like uh, Taylor Brown. Taylor Brown. The famous Mr. Taylor Brown. Haven't heard a lot from Taylor Brown on defense so far. It's the first kind of impact he's made on the game. He's definitely, he's there when you need him. He is there when you need him. And we needed him there. Again, it's familiar now, it's uh, Routledge and Martin in the backfield. Routledge takes his time, looks to his right, and again completes to Wu. This time, Tom Singleton-Wells wraps him up immediately for just half a yard. A fantastic tackle there, an absolutely fantastic tackle there, bringing the man down. Unfortunately, that does lead to an another first down, and that's good news here for these, these Nighthawks, who are, by the sounds of it, just trying to turn down that clock, but want to end this with a touchdown would be a, a good way to get going to the second half. Yeah, end this with a touchdown quite right now and they do do this kind of ball control offense when they need to obviously in this situation just needed five yards and picked up five from Wu so brings up a new set of downs this time they go out to number 10 who manages to make one man miss but Taylor Brown comes over to clean up Complete that's Alex Eager I see another flag there did we see a block in the back there or a hold I'd, uh, it's hard to follow the ball with these no hawks they're very crafty very very crafty <laughs> Crafty Nighthawks <laughs> still making yards. Illegal block in the back, number 14, offense, 10 yards, previous spot, still first down. So, All right, so that's on Jordan Houghton, one of the wide receivers, trying to help his teammate get downfield, but uh, held on. Uh, another, uh, another mistake. Uh, there's a lot of mistakes going in today, but uh, it's about how you bounce back from them. And uh, the Merseyside have points to prove that they're bouncing back from their mistakes and they're learning. So they get pushed back into their own territory. This is now first and 20 for these uh, for these Nighthawks. Routledge takes the ball under pressure, and it's a screen. Martin up the middle in loads of space, and is finally met by Taylor Brown and others. Um, so that is uh, Matthew, sorry, Nick Jones, sponsored by Glenfield Electrical, and Taylor Brown, who managed to bring Martin down. Well-designed play. They, they do well on these screen passes, don't they? Yes, yeah, definitely. Defense. Definitely. The, the D-line were very much fooled on that one. The offense, offensive line doing their job on that one, getting it over the middle and getting some serious yardage there for the Nighthawks. And here we have, here we have a penalty. Dead ball. Personal foul. Late hit, number 56. 15 yards. The down counts. Second down. No, we don't need to be seeing anything like that. That's that's not necessary afterwards. And with a team doing as well as this, that was a very silly mistake there made by the Nighthawks, and that could cost them. They could things like this can change the flow of the game. You know, it's about being smart now. So John Mayer, that is offensive lineman, who's uh, again. So the Nighthawks get into Leicester territory and then get pushed back, and then they, you know, on a penalty, and that's happened twice now. So taking one step forward, two steps back, are the are the, are the um, Nighthawks on this drive. Routledge rolling to his right. Looks like he's going to throw this one, and it's picked. Oh, well, it looked like it was picked and then dropped. So uh, it's uh, Nick Jones, it looks like, who wasn't able to hold on to that. And that was fired right into his sternum, and that was a hell of a bullet as well. That was absolutely fantastic. So he'll be disappointed with that one. More laundry on the field. So flags down in the middle of the field, back at the 42-yard line. Having a legal forward pass against number 17. Oh, more mistakes. Five yards. Also loss of down. Third down. So Routledge was rolling to his right and just passed that line of scrimmage when he threw the ball. So that's that's three, that's three in one go. It's it's it's. So here's a question for you, Nev. If that ball had been intercepted, would it have been an interception? 
I would have said, ooh, ooh, no, that's interesting. There you go, Niv. You were, I was There's one you... for you to study up half time. <laughs> Where's my <me> phone? <laughs> Third and 20. For these uh, Nighthawks who've been battered by penalties on this drive. We've had uh, holding penalties. We've had uh, unsportsman's likes. Uh, and uh, they're now at third and 20. Routledge back and he does go deep looking over the middle, but that's overthrown everyone. So that's going to bring up a fourth down. So they do hold. And uh, you would imagine they would punt here, Nev. Yeah, definitely. That was uh, that was all Merseyside's fault, I would say, for that drive. Uh, lots of mistakes there. Maybe getting into a bit of a rut there on, on that drive. But uh, you say, we still have half a football to go. There's still a lot more to be done. And the Falcons' defense on that one were very, very active, with Taylor Brown doing a fantastic job. And obviously, uh, Jones, unfortunately, just, just missing that, that interception. But... It's, they're now starting to get there, starting to get moving, but can they capitalise on the mistakes that Merseyside are making? So we've got uh, Matthew O'Connell, who has the kickoff duties, also has the punt duties for Merseyside. And I think if. Time out, Merseyside. That's their second. Time out for Merseyside as they think about this one, but I think this is the first time we've seen Merseyside punt, isn't it, Nev? Um, yes, yes, I think so. Which gives you an idea of the uh, the nature of the first half, if you've just joined us. So Merseyside have come out swinging. They have certainly come out swinging, put 21 points on the board. And the Falcons have had to really grind for the six points that they have. And then we're going into the second half, and it's going to be... Are we going to see a, a shift here from what we just saw in the last drive with, with, with Merseyside? And you know, those mistakes that really did cost them. Certainly taking Watts off, putting Brad Thompson on, seems to have given, you know, Thompson coming out of retirement, Noel, because I was saying in the pre-game interview, but it's given it's given the Falcons some life, hasn't it, towards yeah. the end of this uh, first half. So we're back to the punt now after the timeout from Merseyside. We'll try and get you updated on the clock as soon as we hear, but here we go, fourth down, punt. Tom Singleton-Wills back, Taylor Brown back. Matthew takes the kick. It's a good high kick, relatively short. It's going to bounce at the 30, and this time takes a bounce, and there's Taylor Brown, picks it up in space, looks to dance his way, and that's decent coverage. So uh, Taylor Brown with a nice kick return, sponsored by Alexandra Kay. Uh, and that's Taylor Brown, and that's the uh, that's a good impact from Taylor to, yeah, to take quick advantage of that bouncing ball. He's been very quiet for a little while, but he's, he's made a couple of very high-impact plays, which we always want like to see from everybody on the defense. But that special teams play was, was good. Everyone was where they needed to be. And the offense now are in key position here to go into the half with a touchdown. All right, so let's see what these Leicester Falcons can do. There can't be much time left on the clock. It's Brad Thompson now takes the snap. And hands off to Lewis Hyde, who again finds space, trying to get free, but that's a saving tackle that time by Weeks, who has to rally to bring him down. Lewis Hyde finding 25 yards up the middle. And he's really making an impact now, isn't he, Nev? Yes, definitely. I do want to point out one of the offensive linemen on that one, Mr. Mikey Thiers, former sergeant in the uh, US Army Rangers. He would have fantastic uh, block there giving plenty of room for the running back on that one. If you just have a look here, look at this. Yeah, you can Bang, see those right where he linemen. needed to be. Back to live action now. This time it's Hyde again. Tries to spin out of a tackle from those difficult linebackers. And I that is number 56. Well, actually, a number 55, Mark Houghton on the tackle. And he's a dangerous-looking man, that, that, that Mark Houghton. He's a big chap. And I uh, must admit, if I was on there, I'd be terrified of him. He's a big boy. And he's effective. He's very effective in the, in the middle of the field. Second and seven now as the Falcons looking to drive behind the tough running yards of Lewis Hyde. Brad Thompson this time looks to throw. Lots of time. Finally the pressure comes, rolls to his right and gets the ball to Hyde who manages to pick up a gain of about four. So Hyde and Thompson connect for four and that's going to bring up a manageable third down of about four five. Obviously there was nothing there for, for the quarterback to throw to. Absolutely no, nothing at all but O-line holding as much as possible, but Hyde once again being productive, being where he needed to be, getting those good yards. This time Hyde in the slot as they go with an empty set, five receivers out. They do have Malero and Adekunli to the bottom of your screen. Hyde and Jarrett and Deere up at the top of your screen as Thompson now looks to his left. And that one's going to be blown dead. Flag on the field. 
Somebody, uh, I think somebody didn't move or something. Well, the didn't play move began. Or... Ball start, 15 on the offense. Five oh. yards, still third down. So here we go. It's uh, the, the old step forward, two steps back. It's, it's so close to the end zone as well, and, and this is not what you need going into the second half. So more penalties. <laughs> two minute warning, two minutes. Has to have three timeouts. Merseyside have one timeout. Two minutes to go. Critical third down now, Nev. Third and nine. You've got a, a chance here, haven't you, to go into the half, having closed the gap. You go yep. 21 points down. You pull it back from a Lewis Hyde touchdown. Now you've got a chance really to make it competitive in the second half, but only if you can convert here. It's, this is going to be the definition between a, a medium Time half and a Leicester, hard half. That's their you know, it's going to be a matter of can they go in there with another touchdown and possibly a two-pointer. So, yes, as you say, bring that in. Otherwise, they're really going to have to dig deep and grind to get those touchdowns that they need to pull ahead and for a comfort victory. But also looking at the, the Mersey side, it's honestly going to be about can they maintain what they have because they're starting to crack. It seems to have been the difference, doesn't it, with Brad Thompson coming on. Francis goes off with an injury. Lewis Hyde comes on. And you've got suddenly a completely different backfield for Leicester yeah. Falcons. You move from Watt and Francis to Hyde and Thompson. And that seems to be making a big difference. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And it's, it's worked. Whatever's happening now, whatever the changes they've done are working. So let's see if uh, it pays off before the half. Third and nine then. Critical down now for these Leicester Falcons if they want to do anything before the end of the half. We've had the two-minute warning. This is the first play. So Lewis Hyde and Thompson in the backfield, four receivers out. Snaps good, Thompson looks to his left, but this one's gonna be short. Trying to get the ball to Tom Jarrett, incomplete. That's gonna bring up fourth down. Incomplete there on the third down, we're gonna be at fourth and nine. So I'm not quite sure what they had planned there, but that looked like even if that had been complete, it would have been a short of the nine yards that they need in order to convert. So yeah. Nev, what was the thinking on that one? Um, I'm not sure what the thinking on that one was. Looking at this Merseyside defense and how they're converting to the ball and how quick they're moving. You know, that, I can't imagine that one would have made it all the way to the second for the first down marker. They're going to go for it on fourth down anyway. Uh, they're 15 points down. They're looking to get back into this one. So Thompson now with the snap. Receiver's going deep. He's going to get the ball to Hyde, who picks it up in space, and that's his second oh, touchdown. No! So Lewis Hyde single-handedly takes this team on his back and has pulled it back for these uh, Leicester Falcons. And a great pass there from from Thompson, but Lewis Hyde knew he was in acres of space there and he yeah. beat, the uh, beat the defensive back off the line. Oh, the, the quarterback Thompson was absolutely fantastic, throwing under pressure there with the D-line absolutely all over him on that one. It was absolutely fantastic. Now with the two-point conversion, let's see if the Falcons really can go into the half with closing that gap and bringing hope to this for this game. So can they get within one score? Let's see if they can do that on this play. We've got four receivers out. Hyde in the backfield who stays in to block. Thompson guns it. Oh. But Natal Malero couldn't hold on to that Three, one as two, Weeks two, was all over him. And there's a bit of jawing going on there between Natal and Johnny Weeks. And <laughs> you know those two are going to have a bit more to say to each other. Oh, most definitely, most definitely. All right, so Leicester Falcons with two scores from uh, NTU uh, pickup this year, Lewis Hyde making a massive impact on the ground initially and now through the air. Yeah, it's, it's exactly where it needs to be. It need, needs, need, needs to be dual threat, but you need to make sure that your ground game is good and Hyde is doing that. Hyde is bringing that ground game and it's absolutely fantastic to see. But say so we cannot emphasize how important it is to make sure you don't, you know, you, 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 Make sure you understand that these Nighthawks are not going to go down swinging. They are definitely going to try and hold on to this and go into this get into the second half with fight in their hearts. All right. So, Leicester Falcons score 12 unanswered points. They go for two both of those uh, after each of those touchdowns. They don't manage to convert, so it's 12 rather than 14. But it's a nine-point game as we get to the latter stages now of this first half. So... Burton again with this little tricky onside kick. 42 tries to field it and does. Good hands, tries to keep his feet. And Hyde rips it out. Oh. And it might be that Hyde's recovered it. 
We're just having a look now whether whether 42 was actually on the ground. All the action here happening on the sideline. So Hyde tries to rip it out. Again, making plays on offense, making plays on special teams. But that one is going to be on the ground. By the looks of things, it looks like it was knocked out of bounds in the melee there. But uh, this may go back to the Nighthawks on this one. Certainly looks like the Nighthawks are coming onto the field. But fan, uh, fantastic work by special teams on that one. Absolutely brilliant for the for the Falcons. Getting in there, getting on the ball, getting converging on the ball. You know, it, 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 the special teams are strong today. Would you agree, Carl? Yeah, Neil Penrose, number 42 for the Merseyside Nighthawks, having to think fast there to, uh, you know, pick that ball up. Initially, it looked like he wasn't going to catch it, managed to get it, and uh, Lewis Hyde not able to rip it out in the end. So it's the Nighthawks who will take over with very little time left on the clock. You would imagine, I'd think about about a minute left, maybe. So you've got trips to the top of your screen. Let's see what uh, Routledge wants to do here. Again, rolls to his right. We've seen this a lot. Under pressure, manages to get the ball. Up the right sideline is Wu, who's dancing and jigging his way, That's Dominic Wu, for another first down. Uh, Dominic Wu has been, an, uh, has been a safety valve for this offense. He's just been exactly where he needs to be. When things don't look like they're going to accord, Dominic Wu is there making the catch and getting something from maybe a play that hasn't quite gone to plan. So, Routledge now uh, in his hurry-up offense, trips now to the bottom of your screen, Shimanga in the backfield, Routledge looks at his single receiver, but that's the roll now under serious pressure, and he's going to try and throw it out, it's a dangerous one, with Tom Singleton-Wells lurking there to see whether he could pick that one off, that one's incomplete. And that's an incredibly scary sight, number 95, my good friend Rob Rees, chasing down anybody, and... And that's absolutely fantastic of him chasing down and keeping pressure on that quarterback. And then the linebackers, cornerbacks, doing their job to be everywhere they need to be. Yeah, Rob Rees, number 95, on the pressure there. And uh, that pressure was coming on that one. Second and 10. So, some movement from the Falcons. Routledge audibling now. See something that he likes. Maybe going to look to see whether he can go deep on this one. So, Routledge drops back. Goes short, goes to Wu. Wu cuts back inside, cuts back against the going again, but that's a nice tackle from Tom Singleton Wells, who's been solid today against Wu. However, it's another 11 yards and another first down. Is it that the Falcons are sitting off and just allowing these short passes to uh, to emerge? Maybe they're, they're they're thinking maybe there's going to be a bomb at some point here. Maybe something's going to go deep. Maybe just playing it uh, careful. All right, here's Routledge this time, rolls to his left, now cuts back, sees a seam, now dancing back to his right-hand side, tricky to bring down, but finally the Falcons rally to bring him, bring him down. Picks up a gain of about four. No, the fast boys are doing the, doing the Nighthawks a real good service here. They're all over the field. They're left, they're right. They're everywhere they need to be. And they're just running the Falcons around, defense around. And it's great to see from, the, from these Nighthawks. All right, so that's going to bring up uh, second down. Referee's talking about this one. The ball is marked at about second and five. Coming into the final parts of the, uh, the the second quarter here in the first half. Timeout, Merseyside. That's their third and final timeout. Third and final. So Merseyside are driving, aren't they? They're taking ten yards, ten yards, moving down the field, and now bringing up the second and five. They will want to go into the half with uh, that score of their own, whether that's a field goal or a touchdown. And what with can only be under a minute left to go, it's obviously a, a quick conflap here to try and work out something to get round this Falcons defence, who currently right now are working their hardest. With uh, well, just being told here by my man in the studio, there's one minute, three seconds left. 15 seconds. 13 seconds. OK, correct me if I'm wrong. So, very little time left on the clock. We'll see what the Merseyside Nighthawks decide to dial up here. Maybe some trickery to get them into the end zone, you Ooh, think, Nev? Maybe, maybe. But it's going to, I say, the defensive backs are going to be ready for this. We'll just see how ready they are if this, if this one's going to go deep. All right, here we go. Second and about six, maybe seven for these Merseyside Nighthawks with about 15 seconds left in the half. They have a lead, 21-12. Falcons have come back. Let's see what Routledge can do here. 
looks to his right, goes deep, and that is to Wu, and that is batted down from number five, making a nice play, Nick Jones. And maybe we'll just have time for maybe just one more, but it was good conversion there on the ball. Merseyside getting downfield, getting into the end zone, hopefully trying to go for that burn, but the Falcons were all over them, doing their job, and, and that was absolutely fantastic coverage there by Nick Jones. So it's third and seven. They can get something short. I think Merseyside have probably got one more timeout left. So I think oh, no, they're all done. Memory serves me correct. Are they all done now? Yeah, they've had their third, yeah. All right, so ne no timeouts. Probably 10, 11 seconds to go in this one for the first half before we break for the half. And it's third and six. Trips to the bottom of your screen. Single receiver at the top. And that's Eager at the top of your screen. He does look towards Eager, and he is going to go to that single receiver who tries to beat Tom Single to Wells, and it's that man, Taylor Brown. Taylor Brown has the ball, who picked it off. He's working now to his left-hand side with this, tries to stiff arm the tackler. Uh, so Taylor Brown trying to make something happen right at the end of this half off the pick, uh, but he's only going to bring it out in 25 yards before he's tackled and brought down. So Taylor Brown, the man lurking at the back to deny them any score. Yeah, exactly, exactly where he needed to be once again. And I think that's going to be oh. the end of the half. Half time. All right, so we have the half here at Blaby in Leicester, and uh, the score is 21 to the Merseyside Nighthawks and 12 to the Leicester Falcons. We are going to go to an ad break, and then when we get back, we're going to give you some analysis from our studio here on the sidelines. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you after this short break. Please come and have a word with someone in their Falcons jersey, or the guy who's just waving right now, Ryan, he is thinking Dragonfly Productions are a full-service live event production company. We can cater for all your event needs with a turnkey solution or can support you with individual needs. We can supply production design, on-site production management, environmental design, scenic design, exhibition design and build, audio-visual design and delivery, and global support. We offer international reach and experience with partners on every continent, so quality is always assured, in-house branding and design capabilities, an in-house scenic workshop, and an in-house video production team. From a small meeting to a large symposium, your meeting will get the same attention to detail. Dragonfly Productions. here in Leicester where the we have a game on our hands Nev they score at half time 21 points to the Merseyside Nighthawks and 12 points to the Leicester Falcons and let's talk initially about your first impressions of this first half it was well the first quarter was just lots of rust lots of cobwebs everything was really struggling for both sides on that one it did seem that the Nighthawks have come out of that little rut a lot earlier and have gone forward by 21 points so but now we're seeing the Falcons really we're seeing some life in the Falcons now and the second half it's really going to be what are the coaches going to say to both these teams to try and get that turned around and see who comes out swinging in the second half all right, so let's take you through some of the action that we saw in that first half. Uh, initially, it was turnovers all the way, wasn't it? With Johnny Weeks with a turnover for the Merseyside Nighthawks early, which gave the Merseyside Nighthawks the ball early on. But then it was fumbled straight back. Leicester managed to get the ball straight back. But there was penalties was really difficult for both teams. And I think Mer Merseyside Nighthawks may be suffering from some early nerves. Yeah, it was uh, killing them both really, really badly, just penalties. Little, little penalties that are just costing yards that you just don't want to be giving up, certainly in a game like this where... You know, one mistake can really lead to a touchdown of, that you don't need or something you can't come back from. Yeah, you can see the uh, the fumbles going on on the board there, and I think it was um, it was 
Routledge, really the quarterback for the Merseyside Nighthawks, that you could just see going in here with the first score. Just a quarterback follow up the middle there and picks it up, takes it in after good blocking from that offensive line, and they've been good all day, haven't they? Yeah, I would say for both sides, for, for the Nighthawks and the Falcons there, both offensive lines have been absolute workhorses. You know, blocking and making those gaps, keeping that pocket protected, and just doing an absolutely fantastic job on both sides of the ball. It's uh, something to be really proud of from both teams. And then it was Shimanga again who scored. You just saw that going in, and, and it was three touchdowns actually from Merseyside. It was Shimanga 15 yards for breaking up the middle, and then Routledge again, you're just seeing on the screen now, for the score off that quarterback keep. And it took Lewis Hyde to really rip run up the sideline. Lewis Hyde playing in his first game for the Leicester Falcons. You can see as Leicester Falcons started to mount that comeback. So Lewis Hyde with the action in his first touchdown in the Premiership. And that really just gave the Leicester Falcons some hope, didn't it? And yeah. at that point, we'd seen a change of quarterback as well, hadn't we? From, yes. from Watts, who they took off the field and they replaced him with Brad Thompson. And also Marcus Francis, who went down with an injury. We'll need to see if we can get you an update on where Marcus Francis is with that ankle injury. He was getting some uh, help on the sideline with that but that meant they had an, essentially a whole new backfield definitely definitely and it's worked and anything that they're now doing is working and now it's now a part of taking what they have and just working hard to make sure that it really does you know bring fruit in the next half so you can see on the screen at the moment it was actually uh, lewis hyde again that scored uh, later on um, that was Taylor Brown's pick that you can just see on that, which kind of put a seal on the second half, really, for these Merseyside Nighthawks. But it was Lewis Hyde and Brad Thompson who really brought Leicester back into this game. What do you think about the decision to go for these two pointers after each of the touchdown, which gives them a nine-point deficit rather than, you know, being a one-score game? You either, you either go for it all or go for nothing. So, you know, it, it's about making the second half as easy as possible. You know, if it... If they had made it, it would have been a great decision. They didn't make it. You can't really call it a bad decision. It's just, it's what you do in this kind of game. You have to m make those chances and you have to go through it and just, you know, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But these boys are going to come out and they're going to work hard to make sure that they bring back and recover from the first half that they've just had. And how do you think Brad Thompson's performed so far that we've seen him in terms of his passing uh, game, the, the replacement quarterback that they brought in for Watts? I think it's, it's been strong. It's definitely been strong. He's got a hell of an arm on him, that boy. He really, really does. And so hopefully he's going to go into the second half and just shine, absolutely shine for the Fal for the Falcons. But, I mean, talking about the Nighthawks uh, QB, he's just been absolutely a dual-threat quarterback who has just done an absolute fantastic job of not knowing where, where he's going, not knowing what he's doing. If he's staying as he's going, it's been absolutely fantastic. And it's taken the Falcons' defense off, off, off their guard. Yeah, there was a couple of times the Nighthawks offense really running that option plays that they run. There was even one play where the referees thought it had gone <laughs> to number three, blew the play dead, and Routledge was holding the ball in his hand saying, hang on, ref, I've done one with the ball. So, you know, Routledge and Shimanga and Martin really doing a great job in the Merseyside backfield, making it very difficult for these Falcons defensively. Yes, definitely. There's there some very strong running backs you've got. Some, you've got quick and you've got speed and you've got good cut in there. But you've also got a brute force that are going right up the middle for those short yardage gains. And it's just doing, you're just watching these guys run with guys hanging off them. It's great to watch Merseyside play this game. I mean, Shimanga's had some big successes. We know he's had the touchdown. Martin also has had the big runs up the middle for these Merseyside Falcons. So they have, uh, Merseyside Nighthawks rather. So they have this two, uh, two running back punch, don't they? They have the speed of Shimanga and then yes. this Martin coming in and the MVP from last season for Merseyside with that one-two punch. Exactly. So we'll see if they're, well, like I said to you before, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And we'll see. Uh, it's all about can the Falcons now change up their defense going into the second half and to try and deal with these two absolute fantastic players. So what can the Falcons do on defensively? They play Taylor Brown at um, linebacker. Uh, he's made an impact late on in the game with the interception uh, and he did have a punt return that he picked up and scooped up but other than that do they need to get Taylor Brown into the game to make these turnovers? I mean it's a team game the one person doesn't change change everything and there have been players on Falcon defense who have been working like absolute stars to make sure that nothing's happening and doing everything they need to do so it can't all rest on one player but Taylor Brown has been where he needs to be. All right, so we're going to go to an advert break, I think, at this point. So we're going to join you uh, straight after this ad break, and we'll see you back.
Dragonfly Productions are a full-service live event production company. We can cater for all your event needs with a turnkey solution or can support you with individual needs. We can supply production design, on-site production management, environmental design, scenic design, exhibition design and build, audio-visual design and delivery, and global support. We offer international reach and experience with partners on every continent, so quality is always assured, in-house branding and design capabilities, an in-house scenic workshop, and an in-house video production team. From a small meeting to a large symposium, your meeting will get the same attention to detail. Dragonfly Productions. Welcome back to Leicester. We're in Blaby. We're here for Merseyside Nighthawks against the Leicester Falcons. The score is 21-12. It's half time. And we've just had an injury update, actually, a couple of injuries to update you on. So Marcus Francis was actually at the GB trials yesterday. And we understand that he may have picked up a knock at the GB trials on his knee. And that has obviously been antagonized today during the first, uh, first quarter, really, against Merseyside. And uh, he looks like he will be out for the game. So that's a big blow for Leicester. That's a very big blow. That's, uh, that's one of the main powerhouses that we have that would get us those yards. So uh, we'll have to just adopt, adapt and improve. Adopt, adapt and improve. Very well said, Nev. And, and the other one is your, 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 the position you play at centre. They're really having to... Yes. Go deep because Simon understands picked up a shoulder injury. Yeah, Tell us uh, about that. Yeah, my my, uh, my backup Simon, I, I love you, bro. Uh, he unfortunately has, has uh, picked up a shoulder injury, and uh, this is <laughs> very scary for us as linemen. But um, again, we've got Johnny in there. He's going to do a fantastic job. He's he's an experienced centre. Uh, he's basically just going to keep the throne nice and uh, warm for when I get back. All right, good. So for those of you that missed the interview earlier with Neil Reynolds from Sky Sports, we're going to show you that interview again now. So uh, Neil has lots to say about uh, the NFL and uh, uh, British American football and a whole range of stuff. And he was interviewed uh, by our very own Onside Productions and our own Matt Walker caught up with Neil Reynolds. Here's the interview. I'm joined by Neil Reynolds, NFL presenter for Sky Sports. Afternoon, Neil. Hi, how are you? Very well, thank you. What, what brings you to Leicester this afternoon? So I am definitely here as a dad today. So my son plays for the uh, Kent Exiles junior team. Um, he's in the Great Britain under-19s uh, junior Lions. He's a quarterback. Um, so obviously with Deshaun Watson coming here, we had the opportunity uh, to come up. So as I spend most of my Sundays driving around, sitting in car parks, standing on the side of fields, I'm very much here as a dad uh, supporting my son, George. You mentioned the fact that Deshaun Watson from the Houston Texans is up in Leicester with the sun's out for him. Uh, do you think that would have an impact at all on the fact that he's taking the time to come into you know, Central England, Leicester, and, uh, and, and give his time to the British game? Yeah, I think it does a, a couple of things. Obviously, it gives a huge boost to uh, the players that are out there learning from, uh, from Deshaun and from Quincy Avery, who was Deshaun's quarterback's coach. So they are, they're going to learn stuff there. Um, I think they are, um, you know, it, it also helps send the message to Deshaun that, that there is an active British-American football community. You mentioned about your son being involved with the Exiles and the GB setup, so you'll have a, a quite a good knowledge of the British game. Where do you see the British game at the moment currently? Yeah, I think it's uh, definitely coming back that way. I think it's benefiting from the, the London NFL games being on. I think when you look at um, you look at what the, uh, the, the teams are doing, the players that are coming through, I think they're going to have a genuine shot to go to to America mm. some of these young kids that are coming up they 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 take it so serious I mean I played back in the 90s and we didn't take it <laughs> serious to be <laughs> fair <laughs> as it is it is now so um, you know I think there's some good athletes across the league I, I'm very interested to see this sort of Premier League campaign coming up um, and I, I do think you, you know I think what FA Abada has done what Tiki Sanko has done yeah. uh, it just gives them hope it, it gives does. these kids hope um, so I you know, I see a better standard of athlete across the board. So a really important and a, and a very quickly growing part of the UK game is the British University set up with books. What benefits does the university game have for Britball in this country? I think uh, I, I'm really impressed with the college football stuff here, the Bucks, uh, for a number of years. Uh, when you look at the way the teams are turned out for a start, they look very professional. I think the standard is is very good. I think they always put on a good sort of finals day. Yeah. But yeah, I think, you know, university football is, is so such a success story in this country when you think about how fast it's grown one of the fastest growing university sports um you know i think any any kind of credit or plaudits they get their way is fully 
deserved. And and you know, I th I think they'll probably put on another good show in the in the finals. That's what uh, happens every year. So I, I think it's in really really good shape. Well, it's nice that we've got two new finalists in the Premiership this year compared to last, and that finals day is next Sunday in Loughborough, just down the road from here. Um, so we expect a good game from that. Another area of uh, the, the growing game is the women's the game with the Sapphire Series and the likes of Phoebe Schechter, who's now uh, plying her wares with the Buffalo Bills, or, or did do. Yeah, so I think Phoebe's a great ambassador for that. I think the, the Great Britain women's team, a few years back, the success they had really kind of kick-started even more. You know, it was there and... The, the ladies were playing, but I think more and more have come in now. Um, you know, Kent Exiles, I've seen it firsthand, have, have had a team. Last year they had about seven or eight players, and they kind of played as a development team. This year they had 15, 20 players, and, and they were growing. So and I think the NFL have echoed the importance of the women's game with that latest 100-year uh, commercial with Sam Gordon in there, and, and obviously the, uh, the, the, the female official, the name eludes me at the moment. Um, but so all in all, I think this, the game in general is, uh, is, in a, is in a really good state. Your season upcoming, we can't wait for the NFL season to come back as we never can. Any major plans for Sky Sports this year? Is it going to be pretty much as things are? I think it's, uh, you know, our, our, um, our, uh, our studio will, will look the same. We'll bring in new faces. We're always looking to add new players, and we get a lot of interest from ex-players, recently retired players coming over. Um, so, yeah, we just keep, uh, keep trying to raise the bar, keep trying to push things forward, and, you know, I'll, I'll enjoy it when it gets here, but I do also enjoy a little bit of a rest <laughs> in the offseason, just a little while. You there, guys. Welcome back to Leicester, everyone, uh, for the second half. It's uh, the score, if you uh, didn't see the first half, it's 21 points to Merseyside Nighthawks and 12 points to the Leicester Falcons. The Leicester Falcons trying to mount a comeback towards the end of that first half. So we have ourselves a game. I'm joined by Nev from the Leicester Falcons, who's doing the commentary with me. And again, we start this one with, a, with an onside kick. And this one, we'll have to see what the referees say. Did it go 10 yards? That's the question here, Nev. Uh, well, those are things. It maybe just about made it. There's going to be a bit of dispute on that one. But uh, we're back. It's 0-0 zero, zero now to both these teams. And wow. Looks like the Falcons are coming away with a good one here. So that's the third time they've run that in this game. And we've seen the onside kicks from them in cheeky little tap it up uh, by Burton and see whether they can cause some confusion. And they did. There was no one there on the Merseyside Nighthawks team to, to field that one. So it worked. There's a little bit of trickery there, a bit of witchcraft maybe there on, uh, on special teams. But it worked. And now the Falcons have got maybe the first of what needs to be some miracles to help them get down the field and make this game something of something that they can bring back and make their own. So here come the Falcons offense after that cheeky onside kick to start the second half. And you have to say... Thompson and Hyde in the backfield here have been great, as, ha as have the receivers on the field towards the end of that second half, really making things count, and they want to um, pick up where they left off. And, of course, the offensive line. We can't, we can't forget the big boys who have been doing a cracking job all game today. But let's just see what, uh, what we pull out of their hat here. So Thompson, audibly at the line of scrimmage, sees something that he wants to exploit, takes the snap, hands this one off to Hyde, who dances around the first tackle and tries to find the edge, and does. And he's 
barreled out of bounds there. There's a nice right, good contact on the sideline here to start this second four. half. Nice second hard hit there for six. for both both teams there, and it's there's a bit of a wake up call because this is it now. This is where the competition is truly going to start between these two teams. As Ben Rawthor on the tackle of Lewis Hyde. Both players not giving any ground that time. Thompson this time goes to Burton out on the outside. And the ball is out. A flag is down. Ball is out. And Merseyside is saying they have it. That's Barton that caught the short pass. And as the first tackler came in, just punched that ball out. And it looks like the Merseyside Nighthawks have turned it over. Let's have a look at the replay, Nev. There's lots of flags on this play. Let's see, uh, see if they actually mean anything. Yeah, there's Barton, and it is... A legal block on the offence. That penalty will be declined. First down, Merseyside. So it goes against the offence. That penalty is declined, and Merseyside Nighthawks with the turnover, as they did early in the first half, so they begin the second half with the turnover. Barton with the... Uh, with, unfortunately, got the ball punched out as he's trying to make a move. So now is this... Uh, is this when Merseyside make the change? Is this... Uh, they're already ahead by nine points, I think. And uh, this is where now, where they now need to punch this ball in and try and basically pull this away from the Falcons. That's what they, they were doing in the Time first out. quarter going into the second. Leicester, so this Leicester first. So Leicester take a timeout. When they come to the line of scrimmage, you can see that they've put um, uh, number three, Shimanga, and number 44, Martin Murphy, both running backs in the backfield this time with, uh, with Routledge back in the shotgun formation. They didn't like what they had lined up as a defence, so they call a timeout to have a think about how to match this formation. Yeah, both uh, are both threats in their own way, and you can't imagine what it's going to be like when there's two of them in the backfield. This is uh, something the Falcons are going to need to be very aware of. Head, heads on a swivel on this one, getting ready for whatever comes at them. And this is a formation we saw a lot from the Falcons last season, wasn't it? With um, uh, This time they go Shimanga in motion, but hand up to Martin up the middle, and he makes contact with those linebackers and D-line, keeps his feet, but that's going to be blown dead after a gain of about two yards. There's a big bunch up in the middle of all the big the big boys, bunching up in the middle there, nothing up the middle, the D-line doing an absolutely fantastic job of, of quelling that. Obviously, they won the battle there against the O-line, and it's great to see that. So Martin, with minimal yardage, brings up a second and eight. This time, the more traditional Shimanga in the backfield trips. Uh, sorry, four receivers out for Merseyside. And this time, they hand off to Shimanga up, up the middle. And he barrels his way through a gain of four. So that's going to bring up a manageable third and three on third down. Can't keep it, I just can't help but not say that just how Shimanga is just a slippery character and how quick he is. And the fact that he's very small, working his way through those gaps that the O-line are making for him. Absolutely fantastic. So they're going to hurry up our Merseyside. They want to quick get a quick start in the second half, but that's a great tackle from number 42 in the backfield. That's James and Beckett, Beckett sponsored by Juice Creative. And Beckett knifing in there to bring Shamanga down. And that's the way to tackle Shamanga. You want to get to him before he's got a chance to get those quick feet moving. Definitely, definitely. I mean, me. But looks like Shamanga didn't like what he saw, tried to back up. And then James Beckett was right where he needed to be, right? Coming around that edge, taking him down with help from Taylor Brown there. So the first critical down of this second half is the Merseyside at midfield into Leicester Falcons territory, actually, and it's fourth down. Now, are they going to just try and draw the Falcons offside, or are they going to actually go for this? themselves. Shimanga's in the backfield, Routledge calling out the signals. Those linebackers creeping up for the Leicester Falcons, quick to exploit, but it's Routledge who takes a step and to his right and then cuts back left and picks up six for the first down. And through he goes, yeah, all for the first down. He's, they're chewing their way through this defence right now, are the Merseyside Nighthawks, and again, with that quarterback who can just run, who can just make that, make that assessment and make his way through, getting those pivotal yards, especially on a fourth down play. This could be this could mean another touchdown for the Merseyside Nighthawks. Let's see what the, the Falcons can do here. So Merseyside driving after the fumble from Barton. Uh, and uh, they look to be making yards a bit difficult. They had to take that series to the fourth down to get the first down. This time Routledge pitches to Shimanga, who looks to get Oh the ball is out on the ground. Who will get there first? That's the James, Falcons. Beckett. James Beckett. Good work there from James Beckett. 
So Shimanga trying to make yards on the right hand side gets about six yards before his kind of domino effect knocks the ball out and Beckett, the man, quick to recover. Exactly. Fantastic work there by the, the defence on that one. Knocking the ball out. And look at him come round, how beautiful that is. Right where, right there, no one around him. That's a fantastic fumble recovery by James Beckett. He should be definitely proud of that one. That's the stat he deserves. So, we've had turnovers on both sides to start this second half. Barton fumbles the ball, then Shimanga fumbles the ball, gives the ball straight back to Leicester. So that initial push from Merseyside, who were making yards, uh, initially it's going back and forth, isn't it? Back to the 20-yard line for these Leicester Falcons. It's shifting. It, it's uh, Mistakes are being made both sides, and it's, uh, it's showing. It's definitely showing. So who's going to be the first one to pull away here and come away with a score? Is it going to be Merseyside who are going to pull, pull ahead even further? Or is it going to be Falcons who are going to maybe claw their way back into this game? So Thompson trying to get the ball to Malero on that first down, incomplete. So that's going to bring up second down. Second and ten. Thompson calling out the signals to his trips receiver side to the top of your screen. This one he hands off to Lewis Hyde. Late hit on the quarterback. Don't know whether that will be flagged. Hyde busting and running his way all the way for a gain of 15. He is tough to bring down, is the XNTU Renegade. Fantastic work. Looking all the way there for a first down. Absolutely fantastic. A hide on that one. He's worth every penny. We're not paying him. So it's absolutely <laughs> brilliant. And Thompson got drilled on that on the handoff. Was it the, that he, was a bit running of a, the option. That was a bit naughty. I'm not going to lie. That looked a bit naughty. The referee was right there, but no flag. This time, it looks like they're going to have a, a timeout called by time the Falcons. Out, Leicester, that's their second timeout. Getting to a nice groove there. Uh, taking a timeout, pulling away from that, but they must have something very tricksy up there, Sidleaves. So interesting non-call, really, on uh, on Thompson, wasn't it, on the hit? I mean, I, I saw it from up here. It did look like it was illegal. But he was, uh, I mean, Hyde was away with that ball. He was defenceless. It was... Uh, no, I think that was a bit naughty on that one, but what can you do? It's uh, when have you ever known a ref to change his, to change his mind? So Leicester Falcons having to think about what to do next on this drive. Early on in the half to take the time out. Very close game. It's a good game, this one. And the second half started off well with exchanges. Both offences able to move the ball, but then two turnovers. First from Barton yeah. and then from Shamanga. And here we are with Leicester back with the ball. Coming first and ten on their 33-yard line. And of course, something's working against uh, this Nighthawk hot defence. Something is working, and it's something they need to be sticking with. Thompson then, with the snap, looks to his left, then goes right to Hyde in the backfield, in space, with a burst of speed up the right-hand sideline, is Hyde. Will anyone be able to catch him? And 25 manages to drag him out of bounds. Will McCown, the GB defensive back, having to chase Lewis Hyde down. And what about that speed up the sideline? Let's have a look on the replay. Well, we, there, there is a flag down in the secondary. All right, the flag, but we are looking at the replay. Holding. You just see how 17 much. 17 offence. 10 yards from the spot of the foul. And that's Still heartbreaking. Down. That, that's truly heartbreaking for uh, Hyde with a fantastic just being wiped away there by carelessness on the uh, receiver's part. All right, so that's going to be wiped off the board. So Leicester making plays nevertheless. Lewis Hyde making a massive impact in his first game in that green jersey. Wearing Walter Payton's old number, number 34. Of course it is, yes. Yeah. The great Walter Payton. And to the, uh, right this half, we're not seeing a lot in the way of competitiveness. We're just seeing mistakes that are benefiting the other team it, 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 it really well. So Thompson and Hyde in the backfield again, trips the bottom of the screen with Malero, that second receiver. This time it's Hyde again to the right-hand side, and that's a great tackle. A nice, clean tackle from Will McCown, who had to rally. So McCown saying, you know what, if I need to, I will make the tackles on the running backs from my defensive back position. Flag down. Just wondering if we're seeing a horse collar here. His hands were incredibly high on that tackle. Personal foul, horse collar. Yeah. Defence 25, that's a 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. There you go, well called Nev, well spotted. It did look high. You rarely see it called these days, don't you? Because most yeah. players you know, manage to get their hand position on the shirt rather than on the uh, behind those shoulder pads. I mean, I'm not a defensive player, I've never have been, but I've always 
thought of it, you know, you take out their legs, can't run with their legs. But we're seeing a lot of high tackling today. I mean, uh, if that's how you do, that's how you do. And if it works, it works. I guess they're trying to get Lewis down any way they can at the moment because he is racking up the yards. So that's a penalty, that's a, a big one, and that will take Leicester into just outside territory as Thompson looks to try and make some yards up the middle. Don't think it's going to be a sack, it's just got Thompson past the line of scrimmage. But uh, lots of pressure coming from that Merseyside Nighthawks front seven. That's going to be so nobody on the outside, there was a man coming in on pressure on the outside, right on the right hand side there. He had no choice, nothing in downfield for him to take a shot at, unfortunately. All right, it was a sack because they're going to they're going to give the sack because it's a loss of a yard. So Thompson, second and eleven now, trips to his left. He looks to the trip side, pump fakes, then goes back. Oh, and that looks like number six is going to get the pick. No flag down, but they're actually going to call it incomplete. So we'll see if we can get you a replay on that. But that's defensive back Ben Rawthor who ends up with the football. But it looked like there was some contact on the left-hand sideline. Certainly a big shout went up from the Leicester Falcons. Yeah. It looked like that uh, old Teo there was clipped. So the Nighthawks are going to get the ball. Uh, it is Rawthor, and they are going to give the, the interception. Let's have a look. So Thompson pump fakes, then goes back to his left. We can't see the contact because it's off camera. Let's have a look. No, we've just missed it. That, that, so Adekunle and Rawthor, some sort of contact goes on, but nothing called, so it was obviously clean. And Rawthor ends up with the, with the great interception. Yeah, definitely. So, again, it's shifted again. It's just, it's like a two and throw at the moment. Mistakes are being made on both sides of the ball. And at the moment, we are just waiting to see who can finally punch it in, who can get down the field with minimal mistakes to get, get some scores. Yes, indeed. So lots of turnovers to start the second half in this uh, to and fro battle between these two teams. This one's going to be a straight off hand off off the middle. Taylor Brown comes out with the ball, but they're not going to say uh, they're going to say that Paul was blown dead before he had it. <laughs> well, a lot of action here from Taylor Brown in the last probably the last ten minutes of this game. If it, it, altogether, he's obviously appeared out of nowhere and is being massively productive here today. So Taylor Brown trying to make something happen after that interception from Rawthor, but it's only going to bring up second and six after the run. See what Rowledge does up here. Obviously, Merseyside getting another score here would basically put a bit of a nail in the coffin of the Falcons, so they're going to want to try and keep this one tight, are the Falcons on defence. So this one is a handoff up the middle. And again, picking up those yards. So Martin again with a gain of about four, and that's going to pick up. That's going to give a third and three. So we're not seeing many of these these long runs here now from from the Merseyside, from the Nighthawks. You know, are the defence now for the Falcons? They're now starting to wise up, starting to converge on that ball, seeing seeing what's coming through, and finally. Here's the pick again, right actually, from a different angle. You can see that Ada Kunli goes down. There is no contact, and Rawthor just making a nice play on the ball. So nice replay uh, from our from our, our guys here on Side Productions and uh, UK AFL. Thank you for that replay from a different angle. Here we go with the handoff to Martin this time, who looks to get and looks to be short. Actually, I think you're right, Nev. They are getting more wiser to these running plays, aren't they? Yeah, definitely, definitely. They're uh, they're moving on that ball and they're doing a fantastic job. And it's great to see from this this defence. So, the last time they had to go fourth down, they had to actually go for it, didn't they, Merseyside? Yeah. Definitely, the deep Leicester Falcons defense seems to have tightened up from the first half. Yeah. And it looks now like we've got a situation where Merseyside are going to punt. They're in their own half. It's very, you know, they're only at their, what, their 21-yard line. So they're not going to want to fake it from here, you would have thought. Let's see what they do. Let's see if they pull any magic out of their uh, hat. So Matthew O'Connell in for punting duties. Taylor Brown back lurking on this one. They do try and get it out of bounds. Takes a straight up bounce and then a Falcons roll. Uh, uh, sorry, a Merseyside roll. And it's going to come to rest at the 36 yard line. So the Falcons will take over, having held them on that series. Yeah, so now at the moment, defences are holding, but again, it's these mistakes that are causing the offences the problem here, that these li these mistakes that are just bringing it back and forth, and we haven't had a score in the in the third quarter, 
and I'm interesting to see who to place a bet on of who's going to make it down the field incident free you could argue that the Falcons have had the best of it so far in, yes. this, in the second half. You, we've seen big runs, albeit from Hyde. You know, it was pulled off the off the stat sheet, wasn't it, because of the holding penalty. Nevertheless, Thompson pretty accurate with his arm. Hyde still making those yards. So there is some momentum for the Falcons here. We'll see whether they can capitalise on that as we kick off this series. Thompson back, looks to his left, goes to... Devidas, who catches this one, cuts back inside for a gain of about seven. Maybe six, actually, Nev, by the looks of things. We're coming in, coming in now. There's a good gain here. Just get, get, getting that momentum going, getting that confidence level up, which I'm seeing the Falcons more, do more and more and more. Second and four, hand off to Hyde this time, finds a hole up the middle, cuts back to his right-hand side, good against the grain is Hyde as he sniffs out that space and down the sideline, still duking and running, cuts back inside again and is finally dragged down. Lewis he's a dangerous running back, Lewis Hyde. And he's, fi he's finding these gaps again. He is finding these gaps and working his way through. The, the, Night the Nighthawks defense now is starting to show these, these holes and the Falcons are going to exploit whatever holes they can find to burst their way through and fight what every single yard they can get. Defensive back Peter Norbury having to rally to make the tackle. And that's going to bring up nice field position for these Falcons with Lewis Hyde really making a difference as Thompson tries to get the ball to Devidas, but this one's going to be blown dead. Maybe an offside again, Nev. Uh, I'm not seeing a flag. Well, the play began. Full start, 83 on the offence. Five oh. yards, still first down. Come on, this is this. We, we've been seeing this all day. We've been seeing a good bit of motion. Uh, you know, we're, we're seeing them get into where they need to be, the confidence growing, but then immediately a mistake brings them crashing back down. You've got to build that up again. All right, so it's pushed them back. It's first and 15 now. They're backed up to the Nighthawks' 25-yard line, and it looks like oh, it looks like movement again, this time from Deera. Before the play began, full start, number eight. Five yards, still first down. Well, that's actually on Malero, so that's Natal Malero with a five-yard penalty, and that's going to back him up. Second and 20, and Nev, just <laughs> Leicester Falcons just hurting themselves here. They are, they are, they are, and, and Merseyside are just sat there. They're just waiting. They're just waiting to see what happens here, and they're, they're just waiting to see. So difficult now, second and 20, as Brad Thompson goes deep, and this one is over the head. The nearest man there was the defensive oh, back. Oh. Uh, and Ma Michael Houghton, who's back on the field after that injury in the first half, so it's good to see him back. Yes, definitely number 55, the, the number, oh, sorry, number 39. So it's, I say, it's, what can you say? What can you say we haven't said before? It's just mistakes, 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 mistakes. Merseyside, that's their first. So Merseyside decided to take a time out and have a think about this second and 20 play. Uh, they're going to want to make sure that their defence can get this ball back for their offence. Obviously, in this situation, where they are at their, what is it, the 29-yard line, you would expect this to be four-down territory, wouldn't you? I mean, you're, not, yeah. you're certainly not going to pump from here. We haven't seen Danny Barton coming on to even make the PATs, let alone the field goals. Yeah. So, are we talking four-down territory? Maybe. I think so. It's. I mean... Looking at the defence, looking at uh, how reactive they've been in this, this game, it's just something you just can't take that risk. It's not a risk I don't think that can be taken today, especially with the game hanging in such a balance like this where the confidence and everything is ebbing and flowing to either side of the ball or to either team. So we'll see how this one plays out with Merseyside Nighthawks having to think about what they want to do defensively on this play, whether they want to just cover up that Lewis Hyde's been having success on the ground, but also some of these receivers certainly catching on the short passes. We've not seen too much long. The biggest, longest pass play today has actually been to hide himself on the touchdown, I would have thought. Yeah, definitely. But Thompson certainly has the arm to go deep. So let's see what he's got on second and 20. Trips to the Bollymew screen. This time it's Hyde again. Right-hand side following his big number 74. His offensive lineman gets a few yards. So that's James Simpson, who's sponsored by BSG, former... Former NTU Renegade following NTU yeah. Renegade there because that's Lewis Hyde on the run and James out blocking for him in front. Big James there doing his job, getting downfield and lead blocking for that one, but we're now on the third down and we've still got a long way to go. 
third and 15 so Thompson guns this one to the edge to Devidas who tries to find some space but the linebackers out there and makes a good tackle and that's Mark Houghton who you've uh, singled out a number of times Nev and he makes the tackle so it's going to bring up fourth and 12 and this is uh, as you said it's going to be a fourth, fourth, fourth and go what have you got to lose here you've all you all you've got everything to gain on this one you really really do so this time Hyde lines up to the right hand side of Thompson They've got a double set out, so two receivers to the bottom of your screen, two receivers to the top. Merseyside in that familiar 4-2 with five DBs out wide. Thompson under a bit of pressure now looks to launch this one to Devidas, but that's with no success over his head. And that's going to be a turnover on downs to Merseyside. So the two and fourth back and fro yep. continues in the second half it does and obviously little in the way of mistakes on that one just nobody where they needed to be and no no gains on that one for the Falcons so but hopefully they can go off have a little chat with their coaches and hopefully hopefully come back on rejuvenize keeping their heads up but now here come Merseyside now with everything to gain on this one you know, they've just had a nice rest there for the offense they've now got every chance to work down the field and punch it in for another touchdown so, whatever the timeout they took, and they had that discussion with the defense, didn't they? Whatever, whatever decision they made worked. We didn't see particularly any changes, but it may be they just had the right personnel on the right players, and Devadas not open. And this means that this one's a handoff to Shimanga, who gets met and dropped early on. And that's a nice play again from that man, Arthur Manny, who's uh, played excellent, a Coventry yeah. graduate. Yeah, fantastic job and getting around that age not only and as we said in the last drive which uh, was seems like an age ago now the defense seems to be wising up now to the the Nighthawks running game yeah I think you're right Nev definitely Rob Burkhart's made some adjustments maybe his defensive coordinator and they certainly seem to be shutting down this running game better than they did in the first half the option maybe not working so well as it did although I've not we've not seen Routledge keep the ball so much so second and eight this time Routledge sees the blitz and moves his running back over to that side of the field and then hands the ball off to Shimanga and nothing there on that one. Running into a crowd of green there. No gain there at all. Or a little bit Shemanga of a gain. So that's going to bring up third and five for the Mersey Sword Nighthawks. They're still in the lead. They're nine points ahead. And so you would ask the question, they're going to want to do ball control and keep the uh... I mean in the third maybe it's wise to just get that little bit further ahead get that cushion a little bit further ahead I mean their defense is doing a good job but with all the mistakes that are happening on either side of the ball it's maybe wise to just just play smart this one is a handoff to Shimanga again who only picks up two so it's going to bring up fourth down they're in Merseyside territory Shimanga's not is he going to get up from that one? It looks like he's taking his time getting up. See where the spot is. Looks like he is going to get to his feet. Okay, is Shimanga. So here we go. This is uh, this is so fourth for. down. Oh, this is. I mean, I can see this being an easy pick-up for the Nighthawks. I, I can, but let's just let's not count out the defense of the Falcons just yet. Let's see what happens here with these great running backs. I can see this being a conversion. You'd have to see Routledge really trying to. He's looking to does that little clap, doesn't he, just to see where that blitzing linebacker is going to come, and then moves his running back to one side. You would expect Routledge would hand this, or, and he is going to hand it. So. Uh, Shimanga does enough for the first down. So they don't lack uh, confidence, do they, Merseyside, no, on these no, fourth downs? And a, a fantastic job by the offensive line for the Nighthawks there with the big surge up front with the big boys wedging forward, pushing them forward, making sure that the running back can really get that, those desperate yards that they need now to carry on and moving on down the field. That's why I love doing commentary with an offensive line. and always giving the credit to those. They don't get <laughs> talked about enough. Nobody says enough about them. It upsets me. Yeah. <laughs> so you're quite right. Quite right to point it out now. All right, this one's Routledge himself on the option. Keeps it from the end around. And he, he's going to knife his way for a gain of about five. And it's great watching Routledge. It really, really is. Watching him go. Watching him burst through when he sees that. He's definitely someone you need to be very scared of when you, when you see him at quarterback. It's absolutely fantastic watching him you know, duck and dive and weave and really get stuck in there at the line of scrimmage. He's been doing this for a number of years. Has Routledge 
played in Europe. Very experienced quarterback now. And playing well today. So far le le leading his team to uh, a lead over these Falcons that they're trying to consolidate. Routledge now with a handoff to Martin up the middle with space. Good blocking again from that offensive line. And he's going to barrel his way for a gain of eight and a first down. That takes them into Leicester territory. And through, through he goes again. Now that's another first down. That's, you know, working his way through. Is he beating down this defensive line and these linebackers trying to work their way through it? But it's all about, you know, making sure that you just keep pounding. Keep pounding, as the Panthers say, even though I don't like them very much. <laughs> All right, first down, a new set of downs for these Merseyside Nighthawks who are turning this drive into something. This was uh, a drive that started way back in their own half. They've picked the ball up and driven well. They've cut down on the mistakes. And uh, they've been rewarded by entering into Leicester Falcons territory as Routledge now drops back and goes for that screen cast again to Martin with men in front. And that's a fumble! Oh, and that looks like it's recovered. So Taylor Brown with the big hit on Martin, which... That's a fantastic tackle there. Absolutely beautiful work. A fantastic. But obviously, Nighthawks were just where it needed to be. So we're looking at the replay now. You can see Taylor Brown comes in right there, gets his helmet on the football and his shoulder pad on the ball. And uh, luckily, the offensive lineman there, number 71, for the uh, for the Nighthawks, so 72, which is Nick Mickelson, is there to recover that fumble. Taylor Brown showing that power he's got when he yeah. can come in and make the hit from that position, that middle linebacker position. He's just an absolute freak of an athlete. He, is just a, 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 he just knows exactly what to do. Get low, get your body in there, get your shoulders in there. He knows how to stop someone that big. He's just, he is a man who's just built for this sport. So we're coming to the end of the third quarter. That one's gone quick, maybe because there's been more running, and it gives us a chance to talk to you about one of our sponsors, Boss Construction, sponsoring Leicester Falcons today. Boss Construction is an independent building contractor. They specialize in conversions, alterations, and extensions, and they aim to deliver a stunning finish at affordable prices uh, and an experience that's painless for the customers. So that's Boss Construction for all your extension and alteration needs. One of the sponsors as we've joined back at the live action it's now first and ten for the merseyside nighthawks and this one the fourth quarter is going to open with a run to shamanga who has to cut back to his right falcons players are there to bring him down but it does look like maybe one of the falcons players uh, maybe arthur manny we'll just see if we can get a number on that and it is arthur manny he's had a good game slow getting up so we hope he's okay here's the replay first play of the q4 Shimanga not able to get to his left, so has to cut back. And it just looks like Manny maybe hurts his arm a little bit going to ground there. And uh, it looks like we have another one down, number 95. Mr. Rob Reese is uh, down after that rather impressive hit he put on uh, Shimanga there. Yeah, he just sort of come in, initially got up, didn't he? And then he, now he's gone back down again. So that's uh, what you would expect, kind of concussive type injury. So. Yeah. We've, we're going to do the checks and make sure that this player's okay as the Leicester Falcons physio comes on. And, uh, Not been too busy today. She's had to contend with Marcus Francis on the sideline. And a shout out to uh, our good friend Dizzy Gillespie, who's an absolutely fantastic, there she is, an absolutely fantastic physio who uh, is an absolute asset to this team. And we're all incredibly thankful to her for, and we all love her dearly. Absolutely, doing a great job. We've seen her come on a number of times over the games that we've covered here at uh, Onside Productions and UK AFL. I do have a, I have a message through the wire uh, about a slight correction apparently we need to make. Uh, apparently it's not Danny uh, Barton, it's Danny Burton. Uh, yeah. That I'm hearing from uh, our friend Wayne Gums. Uh, thank you very much. Much appreciated that, Wayne. Uh, glad to hear that you're watching. So uh, just next time I think I'll try to remember that one. And off comes uh, Rob. Good to see him walking off the field. I do look, he's a good man with an epic beard. <laughs> off he comes. So he's going to take a rest. And they'll take you through the concussion protocol, make sure he's OK. So second and seven for these Merseyside Nighthawks after that. Initial play of the fourth quarter. We in, we are into Q4. And Q3 really was nip and tuck, wasn't it? It's uh, a tight battle, this one. It's still nine points. Merseyside have the edge and they have the ball. And they're driving in Leicester Falcons territory. So uh, Leicester really need to uh, find a way to stop this if they're going to come back into, into this game. 
It needs to be a, 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 this needs to be a big stop here. It needs to be a big stop. Routledge with the keep up the middle. Got good yards initially, and then Tom Singleton Wells rallies. So uh, Tom Singleton Wells on the tucky to deny Routledge any more yards. Probably maybe gets about three or four. And as you said, the third the third quarter has just been a top and turn. It's been like a game of tennis. With lots of with one too many mistakes on both sides of the ball. This now is. This now is the quarter where it needs to happen. Something needs to happen. It's certainly for the Falcons. Now, the Nighthawks, maybe now they can cruise and try and chew up as much clock, clock as possible and hope that the defense can rally. Third and four now for these Merseyside Nighthawks. They look to consolidate their nine-point lead over these Falcons. Critical down now for both teams. Routledge with the Statue of Liberty takes the ball, hands it off late on the draw play to Martin. And I'm not sure whether the ball came out there. There's certainly some action on that pile. Very close to the first down marker. We'll get you a, a decision on that. You can see on the camera there, there's uh, people are still trying to extricate themselves. Still trying to extricate themselves <laughs> and extricate the ball by the looks of things, Nip. <laughs> it's not fun being at the bottom of that. And they're giving it to the Falcons. Hey, so the Falcons with another fumble, forced fumble. And uh, they had a Shimanga fumble earlier in the third quarter, and now the um, the Martin fumble on third down looked like it was going for first down, but uh, the Falcons come up with the ball. And again, it's it's happening again. It's it's mistake after mistake, and it's now swapped. And now again, we are in the Falcons' favour. Here's the replay now. Then, so Martin barrels his way up the middle, looks to gain that first down. 42 comes in, ball comes out. And who's on it? It's difficult to see from that angle, isn't it? Who finally gets hold of that football. But uh, the referee's there on the spot to make the call. So the Leicester Falcons now. Uh, can they take advantage of this? As Brad Thompson comes back in. Lewis Hyde, this partnership now beginning to develop nicely for the Leicester Falcons. Hyde and Thompson. Thompson now goes to Malero, who drops that one just in and out of his hands. Tried to turn upfield before he had the ball in his clutches. Oh, is it, this is, you don't want this to be. You don't want this to be the start of this drive, and this could be a crucial drive for the Falcons now. You know, this is a crucial drive for them to get down. They need to make a score here, in you no. Know, and have their defense make another stop here to have any chance of winning this ball game. Yeah, it is a two-score game. So whilst they, the Falcons have had two touchdowns and the Merseyside three, going for those two extra points, which failed to get, makes it a nine-point game. Thompson back on second and ten, and that's uh, just thrown into empty space. So obviously a misread there from either the receiver or the quarterback. So I think uh, by that one it was just... As you say, miscommunication there, and it just didn't do any, anything for anybody. This is now third down, and we've been given this—they've been given this opportunity, and at the moment it feels like they're throwing it away, which just can't happen with at this crucial stage of the game. Looks like they were trying to get it to Ada Kunley, who didn't cut back on that one anyway. Thompson over the middle this time. Malero manages to get one hand on it, but can't get a second hand to bring that ball down, and it's three passes, three incompletions, three and out. And that was a, that was a wasted of a. Of a, of a Great opportunity there by the, the Falcons defense who did a phenomenal job recovering that fumble. It was just, unfortunately, it was not in the cards for the Falcons on that one. Merseyside were just absolutely on, you know, on top of that one. Yeah, Thompson will be disappointed with that three passes, three incompletions. But to be fair, he got the ball to Malera a couple of times. Malera just not able to hold on to it on yeah. two of those occasions on first and third down. And then yeah. Adekunle, maybe a miscommunication between Thompson and Adekunle on second down. Yep. So frustration uh, there, but Danny Burton on the field. Oh, and it looks like it's a bad snap. Burton trying to recover it and pull it out of his own end zone. And that looks like it's going to be a safety waiting for the signal. And it is. So the Merseyside Nighthawks extend their lead to 23-12 off a terrible mistake by the Falcons. Just a poor snap. And... Uh, and Burton not able to get out of his own end zone. And that's well. not, not what we want to see, be seeing. The special teams have been really, really good today on both sides of the ball. But, you know, that was fantastic for the Falcons to begin with. But that it was just a mistake at the absolute worst possible time for the Falcons right now. Now the Merseyside can come out and really need to now chew the clock. 
Yeah, safety is an absolute killer. Here we go. Look, high snap. Burton tries to get hold of it, tries to pick it up and do something with it. Decides it's too late to kick it. I'm just going to eat this one, guys, because I don't want to give up the touchdown. So 91 will be credited with the safety. And uh, uh, that's the defensive back, Peter Norbury. But really, it was just off the bad snap from the, yes. from the Falcon centre. Would the centre of the Falcons be the one snapping the ball? Because we know that they're into their third string centre, or is it someone else that comes in for snapping? No, we, we have a specific long snapper for, for that, unfortunately. Uh, well, I say unfortunately. Uh, we do have a, a specific snapper for that, and uh, that was just a bad a bad one. You know, you have them every so often. I've had bad snaps, and it just happens, unfortunately. It was, it was at the worst possible time. So Danny Burton now will have to kick this ball back to Merseysides and does so. It's a high punt. Shimanga goes back, takes a Falcons bounce. Shimanga is going to field it now at the two-yard line. Cuts back to his left, tries to get upfield. Decent coverage. So it's a very good kick, very good kick from Danny Burton. And uh, he manages to return. Shimanga manages to get it back to the 18-yard line from his own three. That's a good pick up there by Taylor Brown there. That's a wonderful tackle bringing him down round about the, uh, round about the 18, I think. They say special teams has been great, but there's always just that one mistake which will haunt you. And uh, hopefully, they can just brush it off, keep brushing it off, because there's still time left in this game to try and make something happen. All right, so Merseyside Nighthawks after the safety, off the fumble, off the uh, botched snap, they will get the ball back and. Uh, pick up the ball at their 18 yard line let's see what they can do again two points added to their score so you're now talking about 11 point game Leicester Falcons really need to do something on defense to give their team any chance of a win on this it looks like Taylor Brown is coming to that line of scrimmage but Shimanga knifes his way through a nice hole probably an A gap or B gap hole and that's a gain of 14 yards and a first down it's uh so the cracks are showing now. The cracks are definitely showing, and it's now time to really dig deep and find out who you are at this point of the game, where you really need to find out at what point you need, you know, you don't crack. Don't bend or break, just don't crack. To receive the top of your screen, motion now from Wu, who is, I uh, know, Routledge keeps the ball up the middle, goes Routledge, putting his head down like a linebacker rather than a, well, like a fullback, not a quarterback. <laughs> and uh, charging Routledge his charging his way, yeah, absolutely. Let's have a look at this on the replay. Does do that nicely, doesn't he? Last minute pulls it back and then exploits the hole as that defence looks to cover off that end around. And fantastic lead blocking there by number 73, the offensive lineman. Getting upfield, making lots of room for, for his boys behind. Lyman lead the way. Absolutely. So, big gain there from Routledge takes them into Leicester territory. On this drive, this one's Shimanga up the middle as they try and wear down this Leicester Falcons front seven who have been on the field for a long time. And that in itself, you're now in the fourth quarter. You know, you're, you're getting gassed, and this is the Premiership. This is you know, this is top top ball here in the UK, and you know you're you're going up against guys who are just strong and athletic and big and powerful, and it just it does wear you out. It does wear you out, and especially as well, it's why you need to keep your head up and keep your morale up because otherwise than that, it's just it's going to break you. So Routledge now second and five on this drive Merseyside after the safety the two point after the botch snap Routledge now keeps this one and gets it out to Eager who's tackled in the backfield well read by the Leicester Falcons defense Nick Jones and others arriving to uh, snuff that one out there is a flag down on the play and then another Oh, are, now, are we now starting to see the cracks of the Nighthawks? This has been the theme of today where someone, where one side is making progress and working their way forward and finding a groove and then suddenly it all comes to a grinding halt because of silly penalties. So yeah, let's hear from our, uh, our referee from today. Dead ball, personal foul, late hit, 17. It's a 15-yard penalty, the down counts. Third down. So they've called that on number 17, who's uh, Harry Routledge himself. So Harry Routledge... Oh, he, he lost it in there, didn't he? He does. 
So it's, you don't see that very much. Uh, unsportsmanlike conduct on the quarterback for uh, hitting someone. Hitting someone. <laughs> but we saw him on the run play, didn't we? You know, barreling up the middle there. And uh, like you say, he's a physical player, likes to play that way, and is having success with it. Anyway, brings up third and an absolute mile now for these uh, s uh, these Nighthawks. Long way to go on this down. Let's see what they dial up. Maybe go to that uh, screen play that they like to do. Actually, they'll just hand it off to Martin. See whether he can make anything happen. And he runs into a wall of green. Absolute wall of green. He gets about five and then uh, down he goes. And that is going to give the ball back to the Leicester Falcons, who are going to need... We, well, we expect that the, um, the Merseyside Nighthawks here will punt the ball and give the Leicester Falcons a chance to come back into it once again. That's the, all we've seen in the uh, second half in terms of these high-powered offences is a two-point safety off a yeah. bungled snap. So everyone had a nice little chat in the uh, in the locker room there, and you've now it's an immovable object meeting and a you know unrelenting force. It's just uh, you're waiting for one to make that mistake, and that mistake will be made soon. Matthew O'Connell again back on his punting duties this time. Taylor Brown lurking back there as he does Ooh, a little bit of a. A huge kick and it is fielded by Taylor Brown it makes the first man miss second man now tries to beat 55 and can't so uh, 55 makes a nice play uh, Mark Houghton on the coverage for Taylor Brown I think we have a block in the back uh, down at the back there maybe number 35 for those of things okay so we'll get uh, an update on that flag for you in just a second Leicester Falcons now really need to make something happen. As the referees talk this one over, 55 is just maybe it's a face mask or something along those lines because uh, Mark Houghton doesn't look very happy about it. During the return, a legal block in the back, 54. Leicester, half the distance to the goal, first down. Oh, so this is the start of an incredibly important drive and a mistake has already been made. So that's going to push them right back to their own four-yard line, is these Falcons, where they're going to take over and try and make something happen here. So Thompson and Hyde lined up at their goal line. Uh, let's see what they can get going. You would expect them maybe to start off conservatively, which they do with Hyde up the middle. And Hyde makes a good gain. Finally goes to ground. He's going to pick up a gain of about three and a half, four yards. And that's going to. They're going to obviously now Leicester in the hurry up. They want to make sure that they can get to the uh, get get this ball going as quickly as possible. They need two scores. They're 11 points down, and so Thompson is going to want to have a sense of urgency about this drive. Well, high snap again. Thompson fields it, and high, high pass again. Oh. It's becoming a bit of a theme today yeah. with these these high it's passes complete. going over these receivers. Yeah, there's not a lot of wind, is there? I mean, there's a little bit, but not not as much as you would think. There's a, no. Certainly, the ball's not being caught. It was a very windy day yesterday, but mm. today much less wind. So um, there is a bit, but uh, you'd expect Thompson not to be too much affected by that. Anyway, that's going to bring up third and six, six and a half for Thompson on a critical down. Thompson now looks to his left, goes to Hyde again, who finds the edge and is going to make it for the first down. So good. Fantastic work there on the offense. Fantastic work. And again, the defense just converging all around him, getting around him. And that swarm mentality of just all swarming to the ball. Not one man is trying to take down Hyde. Because again, just like, uh, just like on the uh, Mersey side, you just need more than one person to bring down these fast, fast running backs. First down from the 18. Again, handoff to Hyde, the real workhorse. And it's been that way now for almost three quarters. Well, now we have something. David Ass and Weeks. Uh, looks to be some kind of handbags going on there. Oh, is, that now the, is that the mistake? Is that you don't need this? You don't need this. It's frustrating, of course it is. Of course it's frustrating. It's frustrating to stand here and and watch from the sideline. It's just, but that's just not necessary in a game where everything it's really on the line here. So it's Devidas, and it's Devidas just puts Wu straight uh, straight down, and Wu then grabs him and pulls him down. And uh, you can see there on the replay what's going on. Devidas, a tough, tough receiver. And a physical receiver. Call this on Davidas because uh, it was after the push that the flag was thrown. 
Sorry, it was Alex Eager, not uh, not Dominic Wu. Number ten. This could be a, an interesting one. Who we're going to call it on here? Maybe, uh, maybe, maybe both going to get called here. It looked like six or one, half a dozen of the other, didn't it? From what yeah. we can see on the replay. But um, the referees are there. We we can't hear what's been said. So the referee's just trying to work out exactly what the implications of this penalty is, if anything. We can but speculate. Uh, here we go. After the play was over, personal foul, 83. The down counts. After this is to the goal, second down. So, uh, yep, uh, obviously for the, the shove, which was right in front of the ref, um, they, they called it on that again. These mistakes are being made by both sides and critical points of these drives. It's so important that people keep their heads now because this game can still go either way, but so only if people behave themselves. Yeah, it's so difficult that on that one, is it? Because you can see that Ego pulls Devadas down to the ground and obviously Devadas is like, you know, well, get off me. Yeah. And uh, it's always the guy that uh, the referees see last that gets flagged. Yep. It's the one, it's the one, who's, it's the one that throws the punch. And they don't have... They don't have the advantage of the replays we do up here. So it is now second and 15. And this one goes to Hyde on a sweep to the left-hand side. But nothing swarmed, really going on there. Utterly swarmed by the fantastic uh, Merseyside right, defence there. Great the great work by them. They had not letting that one go through at all. There was no chance there at all. Yeah, the blocking's been good so far for Hyde, hasn't it? But yes. on that play, it really kind of let, let them down a little bit there. So third and about 16. We think, as the Falcons try desperately to make something happen in this fourth quarter. Brad clapping his hands, saying, come on, let's get the ball, let's get it moving now. Takes the snap. Hyde to the right-hand side this time. He did it to the left, and that's a, that's a big hit. hit. That is a Out big of hit. bounds. And that is number six, who's uh, Ben Rawthor, who we've called his name a number of times, including a pick in the first half. So he comes across and shoves. Lewis Hyde out of bounds. It's going to bring up a fourth and five. So a decision here for the Leicester Falcons. Do you go for it? The this risk, here's, here's the hit from uh, Rawthor. Oh, we'll just this dismiss is, the hit. This is it. This, 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 this could very much be the game. This 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 first down is, is critical for the Falcons. Back to live play. Fourth down for Brad Thompson and these Falcons. They're 11 points down. Can they make something happen on fourth down? And he wants a timeout, does Brad. He says, we're not, we're not set, we're not ready. Give me that timeout, let me think about it. This is so key, this, 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 this could be the game here. This is, the Falcons desperately time need out. to march down. Leicester, that is their third and final timeout, third and final. This is, this is, this is key, this is, they need to get down this field and get into this end zone. We're standing any chance, absolutely any chance of winning this game or tying, it's just, Here's this the replay it. now of Lewis Hyde on this uh, swing pass out to the right-hand side. And you can see Rawthor getting off that block and then nice. That's a good, that's a good tackle. Uh, nice good tackle. Head across the bounce. body, out of the way. That was a, a, a good tackle there by number six of uh, Merseyside. This gives us a chance this time out just to mention Cross Productions, one of Leicester Falcon sponsors for this year. Cross Productions, unique blend of creative ideas and digital campaigns, all designed with one key ingredient in mind which is to help your business grow and reach new heights in this ever so competitive digital industry as we're back to the action. And this is a wildcat with Taylor Brown in the backfield as they look to get that first down and it looks like they do. So, and the critical down, they go to the wildcat formation and they get the first down. And that's it, but they're still half a field to go. There's still, this key drive is just about, you're not there yet, you can't, take your foot off the gas pedal yet you need to keep keep chipping away keep pounding away you've got we've got to get into that end zone before you can even start even thinking about worrying about the next drive taylor brown then the go-to man on fourth down picks up the first down now back to thompson and this time he hands off to lewis hyde who's nothing there for lewis that time We're waiting for him the, the merseyside defense are just all over him on that one no Tackle there number made for uh, by down, number 47, Michael French, on the defensive line. Makes a nice tackle to bottle up Hyde for no gain. Second and ten for these Falcons now on this do-or-die drive. 
Haven't seen him go to the air yet. Let's see what they dial up here. This time, Bradley. Brad looks for Natal and oh, just overthrown again. Yeah, came out wobbling. Natal had some space, didn't he? And uh, up that seam where they were trying to get that, uh, trying to get a, a hole in that zone coverage that these Merseyside Nighthawks like to run. With the uh, Falcons O-line still holding their own, still creating that pocket, still doing their absolute best to make sure the quarterback has enough time to get that ball as, uh, out as quick as possible. So it's going to bring up A legal procedure, down. five men lined up in the backfield. That penalty will be declined, second down. So interestingly, Merseyside decide, decide to take the down on that one rather than the, uh, rather than the, the penalty yards. So that's going to bring up an empty set. So Thompson on second down, sorry, third down, because he's going to bring up the third down, quite right. And that's uh, five receivers. Thompson goes down, down, down he, he goes. goes. Second sack. And that is number 90, Matthew O'Connell. Fantastic work there off the right edge, coming right round, coming right round and getting right on his, on his blind side there. That was fantastic work. And he's been working that edge all day, trying to get round get round the, that number 60 there and he's finally done it absolutely good work coming flying off the line on that one fantastic work there no, number, number that man yeah Matthew O'Connell number 90 and what we're gonna, we're gonna it's a fourth down now so Danny Burton is out to punt and it's fourth and 15 we're well into the fourth quarter now there's probably uh, you know very very little time left but they do elect to kick this one Burton with the kick, takes a neutral bounce, then a Leicester roll, <laughs> and it is fielded finally by uh, Laurent Shimanga, with uh, Leicester Falcons hovering around him. So the story of this second half has been the botched snap, I mean other than yeah. the to and fro and good defensive football that we've seen, you know, fumbles being caused right, left and centre, turnovers. But by and large, it's been it's been that one mistake that's given these Merseyside Nighthawks this 11-point lead. Yeah, it's been the, the whole game has just been about the mistakes and how people are benefiting from these mistakes, and it's costing both sides. It, it really, really is. But obviously, more so the Falcons than it is the Nighthawks. The Nighthawks obviously came out swinging in the first quarter, gave themselves that nice cushion. All right, so Merseyside with an 11-point lead now deep into Q4, looking to keep the ball on the ground for first down, and Martin keeping his legs churning for a gain of about half a yard, but not much there up the middle. It's so being met right there around the, right in the backfield by James Beckett, but it gets off James Beckett and moves his way to get back to the line of scrimmage. Four minutes left in this one. Second and ten. Four minutes, we're told, on the clock. So not long left. Uh, the Falcons held to no yards on that down. So, sorry, the Nighthawks held to no yards on that down. So the Falcons may be sniffing a half a chance here to get the ball back. But the uh, Nighthawks now into this four-minute offense. This one, Routledge keeps as he sees that Martin doesn't have a hole and he dances his way. Three flags now thrown in the area of what you would expect to be holding. Six yards. Who's this? Six yard game, but it might be coming back. Sorry, Nev. I said this could be on this could be on uh, both sides, but it looks of things. Uh, maybe a holding call in the backfield. Like, I'm thinking maybe a holding call in the backfield. Holding. 21 offense. 10 yards. Still second down. It's almost like I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Good job, good job, <laughs> good job, Nev. Thank you. Number 21 uh, is Dominic Wu. Called his name a number of times. Could receive at that time. Gets caught. He's been a, he's been an caught asset holding. to this offense. Has Dominic Wu number 21. He's been an absolute asset, and uh, he should uh, come away proud after this game for, for the work that he's done. So we're going to bring up second and 20. Second and 20 after the hold. Wu's shaking his head as he comes to the line. Slot receiver to the bottom of your screen. Uh, one receiver top. And then we've got Martin in the backfield with Routledge, uh, quarterback, the uh, commander of this offense. who's done a hell of a job today. Hands this one off to Martin up the middle. 
nothing there. Down so he goes, brought down by the defensive line. line. That's fantastic work there. And that's, uh, correct me, I believe that was a linebacker. I said Cooper on the tackle from the Leicester Falcons. Fantastic work there, Mr. Cooper. Fantastic work. Brings up third and long. Merseyside obviously want to retain this ball as long as they can. Less than four minutes to go now in this one with an 11-point lead for the Merseyside Nighthawks who have impressed today. And that oh, is, that's a I false think, start. What do, you, what do you think that penalty is? Then? Oh, I'm thinking it might be a false start. Might, number uh, might need to see the replay on that one. Before the play yeah. began, have a guess. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, a ref with a sense of humour. Who, who knew? Yeah. <laughs> the, re the referee confirming what we uh, what we suspected. Uh, if you can't laugh at yourself, what can you do? <laughs> so of course, uh, <laughs> false start there on the offence, bringing it back five yards. So that's Jordan Houghton. That's his moment of glory. We got. Uh, so that's going to bring up third and uh, well, twenty third and twenty. So let's see what they can uh, do here. They're just going to pitch this one out to Martin. Tries to get some room on the edge. Uh, I managed to bring him down, obviously well short of the first down. Pitch out to Martin. That's going to bring up uh, 40, uh, sorry, that's going to bring up fourth down. James Beckett, sponsored by Juice Creative today. James Beckett on the tackle on that one. And James Beckett has done a, a fantastic job today. He has been all over the field. He's, he's done a great job up that middle of the field. He's uh, got some good numbers today on those tackles. So out comes Matthew O'Connell. You can see Beckett there on your screen, sponsored by Juice Creative. Individual players being sponsored by certain companies this year, which is great to see for this Falcons team as Matthew O'Connell comes in to punt this one away for Merseyside. Decent snap. And he's got a good leg, Matthew. This one's... Uh, Deep ball, and it's fielded and downed. So uh, they get uh, number 31, Brandon Parker Stone, uh, manages to get down the field very, very quickly to field that one for the Merseyside Nighthawks. But here come the Falcons. So what have we got? Two and a half minutes, something like that, left in this one. I think uh, it's playing for pride now. It's, it's playing for playing for a touchdown. We know Brad's got that big arm, don't we? And we yes. know he's had some success with the seam pass. He's been trying to get Malero on the seam. He's already hit Lewis Hyde for that second touchdown yeah. on the seam pass. Let's see what he two can minutes, do here. Two minutes. Merseyside, Merseyside have two timeouts. Leicester have no timeouts. So there you go. Good summary from the referee in terms of timeout situation. Leicester can't stop the clock. So they're going to have to move very, very quickly if they're going to get that quick score that they need. Empty set. So you've got Hyde, Malero, Devidas to the top of your screen. You've got Adakun Lee and Jarrett to the bottom. Thompson back now, looks to his left, then goes to his right. And this is Adakun Lee. Just doesn't have the legs to get under it that time. And that's a decent, uh, decent coverage there from Ben Rawthor. Good, good coverage there, but Teo just about pulling away there, but... Obviously, the pass was just overthrown, unfortunately. But the coverage there by number six has been—he's been very effective today as number six. Yeah, he's had that one pick, hasn't he? Um, towards the end of that first half, this time Thompson goes short to Hyde on this little screen pass. See if Hyde can make anything happen. Yeah. But that linebacker stands him up and drives him back, and says, "Not this time, sunshine." That's Mark Houghton, uh, who's had a good game today for the Merseyside Nighthawks. I'm thinking Mark Halton and Michael Halting. I wonder if they're related. <laughs> they were number 55 and number 39. I'm thinking um, maybe some relation here. All right. And uh, this time, Lewis Hyde in the backfield. They're going to go try and get Malero free over the middle on this post pass. But nothing there again. Just the timing off. And it may be that Malero, number eight, and Brad Thompson just not had an opportunity to play mm. together. Because yeah. both of those players can make explosive plays. Seen, I've seen Natal make, yeah, make many, many deep, deep catches in that way. But just, just off target today. Seems like the timing's a bit off for those two. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's difficult to watch. It is difficult to watch. All right. Well, if you're a Falcons player, it's fourth. If you're a Falcons fan, it's fourth down. And James, James All Simpson stands up. Start, 74, five yards. Still fourth down. 
that's uh, that's Big James there being called for going for a false start. So that's back five yards. And that's a shame. The the offensive line have been doing a good job today, both sides of the ball and, and the Falcons. And if this game's going to end, it's a, it's a shame that the last penalty potentially be on the offensive line. Lots of noise now from that Merseyside sideline as they smell the end of this one. It's fourth and 15 as Brad goes deep and David Ass up high to make a snatch out of the air. And that looks like a first down, but they're going to have to move quickly. You have to get set. This is a no-huddle offense. This should be a quick, quick offense. Get quick to the line. Get, get your play and off you go. This is how it should be. First down, but time is against these Falcons as Thompson takes it with another quick pass. This time to Malero. Dukes to his left. Another first down and out of bounds. Nice play there from the Falcons and a good sense to get out of bounds and stop that clock. It's, uh, this is a groove. The groove I keep talking about. Is he now into it? Getting down. Wear out the Nighthawks. Keep wearing them out. So it's second and one. Clock. Time out. Merseyside. That's the right. second. Okay, so Merseyside say, let, uh, hang on a minute, let's have a think about this because we've two quick completions. And it, oftentimes, if you have the timeout and an offense is gathering momentum, yep. you will call that timeout just to stop the offense's momentum and get them uh, get them uh, back in their heads and thinking exactly. about things a bit more. Exactly. It's uh, it could this could be the meaning. This this could be uh, the, either the big stop or. So we got second and one. Coming up here, it wasn't the first down, as I said. Second and one, then, for these Leicester Falcons. As Adekunle comes off the field and they swap in Deera. They're going to look to... They've got to take some shots to the end zone, haven't they, these Leicester yes. Falcons at this point in the game? For just something, for coming away with pride, coming away with a touchdown. So who's your money man? Who do you go to? Malero? I'm going hide, to hide up the seam. You've got choices, haven't you? You've got Jarrett, you've got Deera. If you're Brad Thompson, there is a wealth of talent. Yes, definitely. There, there is lots of people to choose from on this one. And he's going to go Deera. And that is a first down, but they are going to make the tackle. That's Rothor on the tackle who makes a, a nice stop. So they get the first down. But how quickly can they get this ball moving? This is... Uh, this is it. This is this is going to be a matter of getting that playoff as soon as possible. Everything's set. Everyone's set. Noel Kassar screaming the play. Brad Thompson takes a high snap. Goes to his left. Devida snatches it. And he's going. Bundles he's through going, another he's defensive going. back. And, and gets now, it all the way to the seven-yard line. And now we're set of the ball. Moving quick as you can. We've got time to punch this in before the end of the game. Literally got to be literally seconds to go. Trips to the bottom of your screen now. Devadas, a single receiver to the top. Lewis Hyde in the backfield. Clock continues to run. Thompson takes the snap. Looks for Deera. Looks for Natal. Juggled and... That's a catch. He's kept control. That's a catch. Caught. Touchdown. Leicester Falcons. Malero. Back of the end zone. So an impressive, impressive play there from Brad Thompson who connects with Deera, connects with Malero and takes it in for six. Too little, too late, probably, Nev. But nevertheless, good signs from these Falcons. Yeah, good signs. Something that, that can definitely be worked on, definitely. That was, that was good. That was quick. That's what this offense is about. It's about being quick, fast, keeping the defense on their back, on the back heels. All right, they're going to go for the two points again. It's now a five-point game. Uh, trips to the right-hand side. This will bring them within a field goal to win it. Thompson looks to his right, nothing there. Still keeps the play alive. Oh! oh! In and out of the hands of Malero. That's disappointing as Thompson's gone to ground as well. The physio is quick onto the field. Thompson is down. You can see it there. And that could be a, a truly disastrous end to what has been a, a trying day for, for Leicester. And he's, he's in some pain and discomfort is Brad Thompson there on this uh, right-hand side. So, all right, well, the touchdown to Malero was good, but uh, obviously Malero not being able to hold on to that two-pointer. Nevertheless, five-point game. Now, Leicester Falcons have been doing onside kicks as Thompson's actually back on his feet, so that's good news. And he is, uh, he is a bit gimpy, but running off the field under his own steam. So good to see. Um, they've been doing onside kicks all game, haven't they? So this yes. 
What do you expect to see here, Nev? I'm wondering if those on-cast kicks were, were onside kicks were maybe mistakes, but hey, it worked for them last time. So let's see. Uh, let's see if maybe they can benefit from uh, something here. All right, this it would make sense I think to is going to be the touchdown throw. So this is Brad Thompson takes his time. Great protection okay, again, and Malera goes up, bobbles it, and comes down with the ball. Beats Rawthor. They've been having a battle to and fro, haven't they? Those two. Yeah, definitely. Uh, but Natal beats him on that one, and that I think if this uh, tandem continues, Malero and Brad Thompson, that's something which the Falcons can build on. Definitely. Well, most definitely, there is maybe a couple of tweaks that need to be made during midweek training and weekend training. It's something that can definitely blossom into something truly beautiful. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> a relationship worth talking about. Absolutely. <laughs> Danny Burton on for the uh, what we expect is going to be an onside kick. It's a five-point game. There's very little time left on the clock. And it is an onside kick as he tries to pooch it. And that one is very Ooh. close to being recovered by uh, Taylor Brown and uh, Tom Singleton-Wells, both of them racing to try and get that ball. Uh, but it uh, goes out of bounds at the end of the day. So a disappointing, uh, a disappointing onside kick in the end. And it's going to mean that the Merger Side Nighthawks can take over with Leicester Falcons having no timeouts on the clock. You would expect them just to take that victory formation and kneel this one out. Kneel this one out and that will be all she wrote today. Uh, it's been an interesting game with mistakes both sides and there's been positives both sides as well. When, when this comes to an end, uh, I know both these teams are going to go away and have a very long, hard talk with each other about how to go forward for the rest of the, the 2019 season. Absolutely. Let's see if they do take that victory position. Routledge, uh, well, it's kind of lining up in the traditional, um, not the victory position, but uh, it's a heavy set. And they've got the running back in the backfield, but they're still in shotgun. Falcons obviously crowding the line, and now Routledge will go down to one knee. And uh, that should be it. Let's see how much time is left on the clock. But the referee is holding the ball, and that is and that's the, the game. game. So, the final score here is the Merseyside Nighthawks, 23 points, and they are winners over the Leicester Falcons, who uh, managed to score 18. And it was a story, really, of, of um, a good start, wasn't it, from the Merseyside Nighthawks? And then, obviously, uh, the, the comeback from the Falcons, but just too little in the end. Exactly, and mistakes both sides that cost teams, you know, cost both teams, but Merseyside came out victorious there, but I'm pretty sure both teams need to both know what to go away, look at the game film, and know where they need to improve going on to the rest of the season. All right, so we'll, we'll give you some um, post-game analysis uh, in the studio. We're going to go to a commercial break, and we'll see you after these messages. Dragonfly Productions are a full-service live event production company. We can cater for all your event needs with a turnkey solution or can support you with individual needs. We can supply production design, on-site production management, environmental design, scenic design, exhibition design and build, audio-visual design and delivery, and global support. We offer international reach and experience with partners on every continent, so quality is always assured, in-house branding and design capabilities, an in-house scenic workshop, and an in-house video production team. From a small meeting to a large symposium, your meeting will get the same attention to detail. Dragonfly Productions.
Welcome back everyone to Blaby and Leicester where we've come to the conclusion of this week two clash between the Leicester Falcons and the Merseyside Nighthawks and the Leicester Falcons unfortunately have lost this one. 23 points scored by the Merseyside Nighthawks and uh, the Leicester Falcons whilst they rallied in that second half only able to put up 18 points in the end and so it's the uh, first defeat for these Falcons uh, for this uh, Premiership season, their inaugural Premiership season. Yeah, it's uh, heartbreaking as it is, it's early on in the season, there's still a long, long way to go and there's always room to improve and I think these Falcons are going to go on and take a look, look at themselves and basically improve and carry on the season and still be something to write home about. Having said that, there were some really positive signs, wasn't there? Just, uh, let's have a quick chat about the second half because after the first three scores that Merseyside put up in the second half, um, you know, and then uh, we had the touchdowns coming back uh, for the Leicester Falcons towards the end of that second half, it was an eight-point game for a very long time, wasn't it? And, yes, it was. and there was kind of you know fumbles going on. There was a, an onside kick to start from Leicester, which they recovered. And actually, you thought at that point they might be able to make some, you know, get into the end zone and maybe make it uh, even more competitive than it was at that point. But then you had the Burton fumble mm. on the on the pass, uh, caught the ball, but then fumbled it on the sideline. But then it was fumbles back and forth, wasn't it? So you had the Shamanga fumble next for the Nighthawks. And then, you know, tell us, what was your impression at that point in the game where it was kind of going back and forth? It was. It was uh, like a game of tennis, but with lots of mistakes. It was, you know, you were just waiting for the next mistake to happen that was going to cost the team, both the Nighthawks and the Falcons. And it did. Both both teams were making mistakes. The rust was very much apparent in, yeah. in the first quarter from both teams. So and this being the Nighthawks' first game, you know, it was all apparent. But unfortunately, uh, it seems that the M Merseyside got their, you know, got out of it soon got right into there in the first quarter got that nice cushion of uh, points up and then you know use that to keep going in keep going in and just keep the ball rolling Rothor got a pick as well for the Nighthawks number six he played very well on uh, defense uh, turnover on downs from the Nighthawks uh, we're watching actually on the screen the uh, the runs from Lewis Hyde he was he's been a real breakout performance for him ex NTU linebacker president of the NTU yeah. Renegades and number 34 to play uh, today has played really well. So it's been a breakout performance for him, hasn't Most it? Most definitely. He has really had a good good game to prove himself. What with Mar Marcus Francis, unfortunately, unable to continue early into the first quarter. And, and Hyde has had ample you know, platform to prove that he really is a threat at running back. And it has been absolutely phenomenal watching him really do go to work and, and tune up, ch churn up those yards. So you just saw the Burton fumble actually there on your screen and now you, you're seeing the kind of two and uh, back and forth that we had in that third quarter. With the, both defences really coming out in that third quarter and saying, all right, well, we know it's going to take a couple of things just to turn, this, turn the tide on this. So both of them playing very aggressive football. This was Routledge actually up the middle on this one. Um, uh, but it was a back and forth uh, nip and tuck until we got really late into the, uh, late into the half. Mm. So we had a turnover on downs, uh, the Martin fumble from Leicester, and then the thing that actually brought the second half to life uh, in terms of Q4 was the safety, yes. and that was off a botched uh, snap. So yes. uh, hopefully we can get some footage of that up for you. But talk us through uh, how that went, because it, it, uh, it wasn't your backup that actually made that snap, was it? No, we have, a, we have an actual uh, long snapper for that, and uh, like I say, everyone has, has a bad day. I've, as a centre, I've made bad snaps and it just happens unfortunately it was just at a really in, in a tune in a opportune time for it so hopefully he'll just come away with that head held high and just like I say on to the next game on to, it's always the next play don't let it bring you down just keep your head high your teammates will never let you they'll never let you keep your head low you'll always be picked up and, and go again for the next the next drive yeah, so Danny Burton had to kind of struggle with that one in the end zone and he couldn't get it out, eventually having to go to ground. They did give it a two points, uh, two points safety, but that really put him in more of a hole. So instead of, a, it was then an 11-point deficit, which they're having to come back from, and makes things difficult then for uh, Leicester Falcons. Um, uh, they, d they did come back a little bit into the game with the Taylor Brown fourth down. Tell us about that. Well, as I said to you, Taylor Brown is just the man you need when, you, when you're in a clutch. And uh, he did some absolutely phenomenal work today, you know, with the interceptions and, and such. And it was just absolutely, uh, no words can ever describe Taylor Brown. I really, really can't. He was just where he needed to be. And he was a clutch player, if ever I've seen one. Yeah, on that play, and particularly on fourth and short, Taylor Brown, they go to that wildcat formation, give yeah. him the ball. And then it was, I think it was that they were on their 20 yard line. A jack of all to trades. Drive alive. Uh, drive alive. Um, but then later on in the series, on fourth down, we had the sack. 
uh, from the Nighthawks, Matt O'Connell coming in and, and tackling yeah. uh, 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 Brad Thompson, yeah. and that really snuffed out the drive. So it was late on into the fourth, wasn't it, when yeah. we had the final score from the Leicester fans. And that, and that sack was just, a ge all game he'd been working that edge really well on that, on that right edge, and eventually you know, all that work paid off with a sack, a key point of the game. So that was a fantastic, uh, good for that member of uh, the Nighthawks. Absolutely. Uh, but finally, we did have a touchdown to Malero. That was something good for the Falcons to build on. Very late on, late, uh, you know, less than two minutes really left on the clock. But Brad Thompson really showing what he's capable of. Coming out of retirement, we're told, to yep. be the backup quarterback, to come out and help the Falcons out, and really showing what he can do. And you get the sense with a bit more timing and a bit more practice with the, uh, with the, with the stable of receivers that he's got. That would be uh, a huge benefit to the Falcons moving forward. Definitely. Uh, just plenty of practice, always plenty of practice uh, going out of this game, uh, getting lots of one-on-one -on -one time with his receivers, going through everything, absolutely everything, a top and tail of his playbook. you know. And then I think both of them and every other uh, re receiver that we have, I think really this team is going to be a threat, really. So you've had the, the uh, disappointment of the scholarship athletes, but actually today what's emerged is a new partnership between Brad Thompson and, and Lewis Hyde. Oh, most definitely, most definitely. And they don't need visas. <laughs> and interestingly, that you wouldn't have expected that to happen as we watched the actual touchdown to Natal Malero in the back of the end zone there. Uh, you know, and Rawthor trying to get hold of it. Malero holds it up and says, I've got it, I've got it. And I think that that's a, a really sweet spot for the for the uh, Falcons in terms of uh, building that partnership and moving forward between Thompson and Malera. That's something to really look forward to. Yes, definitely, definitely. I look forward to seeing that at training. I look forward to seeing where this progresses now from uh, this game further into the season. I say we're still so early in the season; we've got a long way to go. But I'm going to look forward to getting there. <laughs> All right, good. That gives you a quick roundup of the second half. I think we'll take a short break. Uh, we're actually, we're going to we're going to see whether we can. Uh, wrap this one up actually so in terms of the game overall and moving forwards now to the next game that the uh, Leicester Falcons have to play what do you think they need to do between now and their next encounter uh, it's going to be discipline lots of discipline uh, there was just so many mistakes and it was on both sides both Merseyside and and Leicester you know Leicester are certainly not on their own on that one so for both teams it's going to be discipline and making sure you're not giving away these silly penalties you know blocks in the back holding and things like that it's just got to be about that because maybe it could have been different if there were not so many yellow flags flying about the field today yeah, certainly the discipline side of it is going to need to be tightened up. Um, but good things for these Leicester Falcons team. I mean, they've won one game, lost one game in the Premiership now. And as they move forward, they're certainly competitive, even with the likes of Merseyside Nighthawks, who were mid-table last year. We haven't seen them against any other opposition. So it's interesting how this Prem North is going yes. to uh, is going to pan out. And of course, you've got Tamworth Phoenix always there, always, you know, northern champs and always the ones to gum for. So interesting times ahead. Yes, most definitely. It's going to be an interesting 2019 season. All right, excellent. Thank you ever so much for joining us here at Onside Productions and UK AFL. We've uh, been excited to bring you the game today. The final score here was 23 to the Merseyside Nighthawks and 18 to the Leicester Falcons. We'll see you in a couple of weeks back here for another encounter between these Leicester Falcons, and we look forward to bringing you that one. In the meantime, thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you all soon.